This is down. It always calls me back. Let's get in here. Paint the town red. Start a new game. Oh, 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 oh. That's the wrong thing. That's the right thing. There we go. Skip cutscene, no. I ran out to get a pack of cigarettes, but I left my wallet at home. Oh, it's yeah, forgetting your wallet. That's me. I'm getting old. My name is Sonny. Sonny Featherland. An investigator for 20 years. And once the star of the predatory division of the Clawville Police Department. One half of the legendary Chicken Police. But buying a pack of smokes is more than I can handle right now. Maybe I should just lay low. Yeah, I'll do that. The most colorful place in the wilderness. <laughs> for all the gods, what bullshit. The last clucking color left this city years ago. And slowly I'll turn gray too. Still, what do I expect? We're living in a vast experiment and don't even notice that everything got clucked up a long time ago. We believe in this wonderland of peaceful coexistence. Wolves and sheep, chickens and hounds. Yeah, sure, why not? It's just ridiculous. The dog eats the chicken. It's in our nature. I'm not propping up the illusion anymore. 121 days, and it's over. Retirement. What could possibly go wrong? <sighs> I thought I was retired too. But they, bring, they keep bringing me back. What's up, doll? Ah, oh, crap. My office lock is a piece of shit if a dame can pick it. She stood in the darkness. The light. Um, I'm putting myself here. It painted stripes on her body. It whispered secret little things that were never there in the first place. But she was no zebra. Reality was just a light switch away. Elizabeth or Charlotte? I was sure she'd have a sophisticated sounding name. She had a bygone look in her eyes, older than this ancient building, and perhaps the whole city itself. Or maybe I'm just drunk. But she was the first womanly thing in my place for a long time, so I had to give her a chance. I promised myself I'd write a novel one day. The first womanly thing. Every whiskey has the same color nowadays, at least in this price range. I wanted Wilderness. to travel the world when I was a kid, but I think I'm going to end up dead in here whether I like it or not. Wow. I don't even know what these papers are. <laughs> There's a pile of them, though. I don't think there's anything there. The, the wild, wild gentleman. gentleman. Those guys rebuilt the city after the great fire of 867. The game needs changing. Yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. Gotta change the game. How can we start without changing the game? The game is chicken police now. My he oh. If only I were half as gutsy as these guys. Maybe in another life. In another story. Oh wow, more dialogue. If only I were ha We used to be star cops a few years ago. Tabloid press, radio interviews, and even a book series. I don't miss those days. Of course, Marty, my old partner, would disagree. He just loved the spotlight. Marty. This is... 
I knew uh, a Marty once. This is one of the I most beautiful Gary. memories Gary from my whole life. Before Molly left me and took our daughter. M.B. Davis, the eternal king of jazz. The photo is from the days of jazz prohibition. I only heard the old man live one time, but I'll never forget that night. And not only because I woke up at the harbor without my gun, my badge, and my pants. Miss my pants. The good things in life don't last Miss my long. Pants. The best ones always leave first. I saw that in the window of a shoe store. I never understood it. Or what it had to do with shoes. I mean, frankly, I don't think I've I don't think I've had I don't think I've I've had pants this for a long time. I haven't had a pants since the last game we play, you know. I'm 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 rocking I'm rocking these right now. I'm gotta miss those pants. I miss having pants. I look like a damn fool with these on. These athletic shorts. Miss my pants. The good times. What's up? Who is this dame anyway? And what the cluck is she doing in my apartment on New Year's Eve? Let me say? introduce myself. My name is Deborah. Miss Deborah Ibanez. Deborah. Hello, Deborah. You're mistaken, ma'am. Oh, really? Please enlighten me, Mr. Featherland. I'm not a private eye. I'd recommend Philip... M oh, I mean, Mr. Philmar Lowe instead of me. He's a nice guy. Believe me, Mr. Featherland, it's not an accident I came to you. Deborah, are you trying to seduce me, Deborah? Deborah, I don't know how to feel right now. I don't know where to put my webcam either, Deborah. I don't I don't know where I'm going. Right here? This seems like a spot, maybe. Like the least offensive spot of all the spots. There's a lot of spots. I feel like I'm covering the middle actually seems like the bet. Yes, I could be like your I could be like your little so you could cradle me, Deborah. Deborah. Alright, Deborah. I'll go right here. I guess I'll just cover your name here, Deborah. Honestly, I don't know. Again, I don't know where the where the top center, top center seem like the bet. This sucks. This is awful. I don't know. I'm going back right here. You guys don't need to know the name of who I'm talking to. This person's name is Deborah. Look, miss, I work for the police and I'm currently on leave. I couldn't accept private commissions even if I wanted to. Not even from a classy dame like you. Am I that easy to read? That's my job. But tell me, since you've invited yourself in, would you like a drink? <laughs> uh, I'm getting sussy. I don't... I don't usually drink. Well, I've got a half one. To in a case. And it'd be rude of me to drink alone. So, maybe some sherry? If you insist. But bourbon, please. Huh. Thank the wild ones. That's all I have. What a coincidence. What a winky dink So, come on. So, Spill is I just gonna... From the beginning. Was I just gonna pour the sherry and, like... It was, it was actually, was I just gonna pour the bourbon and like lie to you and say that it was sherry? I mean, I didn't, it sounds like I didn't really have a plan there. Ooh la la. This big apple. I don't see colors anymore. Only emptiness. Everything faded. I need another drink. Murky brown swill. I should improve my standards. You know, you gotta treat yourself in one way, and if you're gonna drink, then Maybe you know, in buy the good stuff. Old bird. Buy the good stuff. It's worth it, I find. I mean, you shouldn't be drinking that much alcohol in the first place, you know, like. If you are gonna drink, then you should treat yourself when you have a drink. That's my thought process. 
Anyway. Legs that go on for days. Deep, dark eyes. Silky skin and voice. You're in big trouble, pal. Oh, God. That's better. Now, if I understand correctly, your mistress is receiving threats. What kind of threats, exactly? It's a very strange matter. First, there were letters. Then it came printed on a wine bottle's label. This can't be the best spot. I mean, I, honestly, I, this is the least offensive spot I've seen, you know. I, I think it's time to oh, dig a little God, deeper. God, it looks like, wait, That's replay. Better. Now, if I understand correctly, your mistress is receiving threats. What kind of threats, exactly? It's a very strange matter. First, there were letters. Then it came printed on a wine bottle's label, sent Harry. as a gift. Then carved into a brick, thrown through the window. And finally, they painted it on the wall of the house in giant red letters. I think it's time to dig a little deeper. If you don't mind, I'd like to ask you some routine questions. Please, that's why I'm here. The way that she's talking to me. I don't even know where the key is. Making me feel Whatever's weird. Whatever's inside is gonna stay there forever. What is that, a cabinet? What about these old books? Books I'm never gonna read. Maybe nobody ever has. My God. All right, Deborah, it's time to question. Focus on what you know about the suspect. Is he or she suspicious? Concentrate on that. Subject, Don John Doe. His name is John Doe? That's amazing. This fella is rather suspicious. I need to concentrate on that. Detective meter. He is suspicious. I am suspicious. Why are you suspicious? Gather impressions from the suspect. Okay. A new impression. Question one, two, three, and four. So many options. Detective Mater is your best friend. It shows how well the questioning is going. Keep it on the positive side. All right. Blah, blah. I like that. I must be cautious and smart. This dame seems shy, which I can use to my advantage. But I must be careful about what I say to her, or I can scare her off. Let's start gently, and when the time comes, we can go in hard. You like to go in hard, don't you, Sonny? Who exactly are you, ma'am? Who exactly are you, ma'am? All right, I guess you'll say it for me. I'm... I'm not somebody important, Mr. Featherland. You're important enough to deal with such a delicate matter, right? I carry out the wishes of my employer, nothing more. This means simple paperwork, most of the time. You've been thrown into deep water, sweetheart. Tell me, can you even swim? Believe me, this is just as unpleasant for me as it is for you, if not even more. Hmm. You're not very confident. Tell me, which part of the city do you live in? Calavera Hills? Flowerville, maybe? Tell me, which part of the city do you live in? Calavera Hills? Flowerville, maybe? Look, I... I don't want to answer that. I'm here on behalf of my employer, and not on personal business. Sure you are. Fair point, Deborah. Let's try a different approach. Yeah. Why did you choose to visit me? Oh, wow, I've got this. Wow, every spot is just awful. Every spot is, uh, is bad. Every spot in this game is bad. It's best, if, genuinely best, it seems, if I'm in the center of the screen. There's no spot that feels good for my webcam. I'm telling you, middle. Th this? Where I... <laughs> I kind of like this. And now I'm Deborah. Hello there, everybody. Do you like my body? Perhaps my ears? 
Now we're ducking. Yeah, this is the good stuff. Where the fuck? Get rid of it. What's the point then? What's the point in dressing up? What's the point in being Detective Cheese? How dare you? I got into costume and everything. And you're telling me to go away? This is fucked up. I'm putting it right here. Whatever. I don't fucking care. Why did you have to visit me on this particular evening? Why did you have to visit me this particular evening? I have my reasons. I may look like a silly little fawn, and maybe I am, but I still have common sense. I don't doubt that for a second, Miss Ibanez. This day is essential to my mistress, and she thought it's also important to you. A message in itself, for sure. But to be honest, even you are. You know what? I'll just take that as a compliment, even if it wasn't meant as such. Hmm. Now she's frightened. Do you even know what you want? Were you born and raised in Claville? Why did you come to visit me? Why not your employer herself? Were you born and raised in Claville? Were you born and raised in Claville? Why do you ask? We're starting off gentle. <laughs> I couldn't think of anything better. Well, I'm not from around here. I'm from Grassmore. Maybe you could hear I have a slight accent. Do you know where it is? Where what is? Grassmore, of course. You just asked. Oh, that. Don't worry about it. I'm not interested. <laughs> You're a rude son of a gun, Sonny. Huh. Do you like to play with other animals? Oh, for the wild ones. Am I that transparent? I'm afraid so. Well, I'm a little rusty, it seems. Eh, let's change the subject, shall we? Hmm. Where did you come to visit me? Why did you come to visit me? Why not your employer herself? My employer is Miss Natasha Katsenko. She hasn't been leaving her home lately. Only if she really has to. How so? Miss hmm. Natasha is afraid. She's scared because of those unwanted messages. And everyone knows who she is. So she's that kind of woman. I don't know what you mean. Of course you do, Deborah. Thank you, by the way. We're finally getting somewhere. We avoided the point long enough. Deborah's hiding something, no question. Let's focus on that. What do you want from me? What exactly did you expect by coming here to meet me? I'm sure it's not intentional, but are you dying with me? How'd you get this address? Hmm. What exactly did you expect? What exactly did you expect by coming here to meet me? I expected your help, just like my mistress said. Oh, that's very nice. But have you seen this neighborhood? Have you seen this wreck called a hotel? Who were you hoping to find in a place like this? Someone reliable. Hmm. Just randomly. Well, I am reliable. And discreet. That's right. And thorough. Are you flirting with me, Deborah? No question about that. And has a heart of gold. I don't know about that. Okay, let's stop it right there. Are you in some sort of jam? Are you in some sort of jam? Nothing of the sort. There are simply things better left unsaid. Then you're wasting my time. I trust your instincts. You'll manage it. Yeah, and I have no other choice, right? To be honest, no, Mr. Featherland. Not really. Uh, don't you think this whole thing is a little don't suspicious? Don't you think this whole thing is a little suspicious? Look, Santino. I'll explain everything. I have no doubt about that. You look just the type, sweetheart. No offense. I'll take that as a compliment. Or maybe I'll act like I haven't heard it. 
You see, we're starting to understand each other. Tell me, Deborah, why should I believe you Tell at all? Tell me, Deborah, why should I believe you at all? Because my mistress trusts you. Should that be enough? If you really like what she thinks you are, then yes. Damn, what can I say to that? Look, I didn't mean to back you up against the wall. You have a way with words, sweetheart. Did you ever want to be a cop? No, not for the world. <laughs> Smart answer. Be honest and tell me what you're so afraid of. You know, Mr. Featherland, my mistress's partner is Hobart Wessler. Or as most people know him... Ibn Wessler, the Kingpin. Hmm. Exactly. The Kingpin. So, uh, the cat and the mouse are together then, it seems like. Can I look at these people? Feathery gods, help me. So you get it now. The secrecy. To put it mildly, I think I understand it all. Wessler. This little piece of the puzzle changes everything. Ah, I'm a true detective. This game said so. Nice. Uh, continue. Sure. Why the hell not? Anyway, I have a lot of new information, it seems like, here in the notebook. It's a detective's best friend. We love a good notebook. The victim, a lady, is a, the target of some strange threats. All of them are written. What do they say? Mysterious messenger, Miss Deborah Abinez's employer, is a certain Miss Natasha Katzenko. Okay. The employer, Natasha's current significant other, is the infamous gangster, Ibn Wessler, or Ibn Wessler. Hmm. Natasha. Interesting. Special feature, she has remarkably green eyes, and she definitely is in trouble. So am I. Pretty and fragile, nothing too special. Good looking, charismatic, and a clucking gangster. One of the most well known gangsters of Claville. Real estate mogul, bank director, museum owner, distiller, smuggler, and information broker. And that's only the half of what I've heard about him. He has his dirty little paws everywhere in the city's underworld. What a scumbag. Hmm. Hotel Atlas. Used to be a nice place. Now we're competing to see who gets swallowed by the decay first. But honestly, I'm not that far behind. Yeah, interesting. Wow. So these are the gods, the wild ones. Three gods are revered in most places across the wilderness. They're the great wild ones who make up the holy trinity of creation, destruction, and silence. Harati is the goddess of creation. Pakti is the lord of destruction, and Navakti is the genderless ghost of silence and nothingness. Keeping the balance between creation and destruction is the, in their never-ending conflict. Interesting. Huh? 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 You're banned? <laughs> All right, time to speak. Why don't you take it to the police? Just go there and file a report. Photos, flashing lights, fingerprints, you know the drill. The evidence is very clear. Even a moderately talented detective could easily wrap this case up. I'm a moderately just talented to detective. Triple five, triple one. Please, take a look at this. Well, okay. Triple five, Let's triple see. one, remember that. We may need to call the police later. Take a look at what? Legs that go on for days. 
Ah, uh, maybe don't look that hard. Don't you want to look at it? The message I gave you. Oh, uh, the message? Yeah, of course, Deborah. Uh, give me a second. I'm figuring out how I do that. Here, you will store all essential items throughout the case. This is an interesting one. I know Molly very well. Please note this when deciding whether or not to accept my assignment. Miss Ibanez is a trusted friend. Treat her as a gentleman. N. Hmm. I know Molly very oh, well. Oh, wow. Okay. All Please right. You're just going to read it for me. Got it. Accept my assignment. Miss Ibanez is a trusted friend. Treat her as gentleman. N. I felt like I'd been hit on the back of my head with a blackjack. Reality tilted. Molly. Good gods. What was her name doing there? I glanced at the opposite wall with the well-worn picture frames. Like an eternally dark hole in the wall. A missing piece. She was wearing a light silk dress and singing a lullaby. The waves caressing her beautiful long legs. Why Molly? Why now? Mr. Featherland? Santino, are you all right? What the hell is this supposed to mean? I don't know anything, Mr. Santino. My mistress told me to give this to you. She said you'd understand. Don't you? Oh, of course I understand, Miss Ibanez. I get it very well. But this case is becoming more and more confusing. It's starting to look like blackmail. Blackmail? Don't play Molly innocent with me. Molly must know something about me. But... All right. When can I visit? Visit? Me? Not you. Miss Katsenko. Oh, yes. You can find her at the Tsar Club. Didn't you tell me she's not the social kind? That she's especially unsociable? Or does she only like loud and crowded clubs? No, she's really not like that. But she owns the place. Judging by the flyer, it must be a very busy club. Especially on New Year's Eve, right? I'm sure you'll have no trouble finding Miss Katsenko. But there's one small problem, Mr. Featherland. Let me guess. Mr. Wessler better not know about my visit. Exactly. How did you know? I'm a 20 detective. years experience, ma'am. Oh, and please, call me Sonny. It was a pleasure to meet you, Mr. I mean, Sonny. I'll talk about the rest with Ms. Katsenko in person. A good friend of mine would be happy to take you home if you'd like. I'd appreciate that, Sonny. A good friend of mine. Is this, uh, I have a lot of personal info on this friend, actually. Is this Lewis? Lewis C. Hayworth, species rabbit. An old friend of mine. He stutters heavily when he ducks. Lewis is the owner of the once reputable Atlas Hotel and a good old friend of mine. At the moment, he's my landlord. It's only the two of us living in this unbelievably enormous hotel. He's crazy about detective stories, and he gladly helps me whenever I ask him. That's Lewis's number, 555-932. Let's give him a call. 555-932. Five, five, five. Can I call the police? Or was it one, 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 five, 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 I think before. One, 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 five, five, five. Call the police. Is this the police? I'm better than you. The police didn't answer. What? What is this city coming to? Where the police won't answer the goddamn phone when you call them. What in the hell is going on here? Hey, Lewis. Am I bothering you? No. No, no. Of course not, Sonny. Old friend, what's up? 
Could you come over? I've got a favor to ask if you're not busy. For you, anything. Just a minute. All right. He's on his way. Lewis arrived a few minutes later. He lived in the rooms above, so it wasn't difficult getting here. Not to mention that he's a rabbit. It was a quick hop. The Atlas Hotel was his inheritance. It was once a well-renowned place, but not anymore. The last economic crisis ruined it. And now, besides me, he was the only resident of this enormous place. Ah, all right, Lewis. The good old the, rabbit. The can long count legs. On him, even on New Those Year's Eve. dark eyes. I'm in trouble. <laughs> Thanks for being so quick, Lewis. Can you drive Miss Ibanez home? I have some things to take care of. Of course, Sonny. You know anything for you. Thank you for being so considerate, Sonny. I appreciate it. Don't mention it. Goodbye, then. So long, Deborah. Mm. I wouldn't pick up either, James. It's just you. What the fuck? I need to grab my stuff first. My stuff? What kind of stuff do I need to grab? My old books, my typewriter, my cheap whiskey, my pile of papers? What do I need to get? I don't have anything. Interesting. I'll find Natasha at the SAR Club. Natasha must know my wife. My, my wife! My wife, Molly, from somewhere. Or perhaps she has a very good informant. I must find out what the connection is. I guess she knows my wife. She runs errands for an employer. Ah, she's not from a wealthy family. Hmm. Her employer currently bolsters the ranks of Ibn Wesler. To put it mildly, this explains the cloud of fear surrounding Miss Ibanez. She's the employer of Miss Deborah Ibanez. Allegedly, she's receiving serious threats. Currently the girlfriend of the notorious gangster Ivan Wessler, this explains a lot of things, mainly the excessive secrecy. She owns the SAR Club. Alright. The Claville Police Department, they don't pick up the goddamn phone. The HQ of the department, aka the Meat Grinder, a huge dark building for shady people. And I don't necessarily mean those who are sitting in jail. Look, they didn't even answer the phone. I mean, there's some, gotta be something wrong with them. And one of the most favorite nightclubs in the city. Owners of the juiciest booties and hardest fists frequented the place. And it's famous for not serving cops. Except if they're knee deep in the dirt. Mm. The Czechan police is a famous detective duo. Santino, Sonny Featherlin, and Marty McChicken gained fame through the case, and, uh, through a case the press called the Bloody New Year's Eve. They flew high for almost ten years, when, in, when a fateful brawl put an end to their legend. There's a series of novels about them by Meredith H. Marvel. They had published ten books over the course of seven years before the series faded out of public interest, as did the chicken police itself. We had books made about us? Oh my god, that's incredible. Clarville's been an independent city-state for more than 900 years. During the city foundation, the four nations had joined forces, represented by the four animal figures and the four hands of the crest of Clarville. In reality, the tribal alliance of the reptiles and the great insect clans had also played an essential part in the city's founding, but they never got to be represented on the crest. This gave birth to a political and cultural antagonism between the species. Glaville pre preserved its political autonomy and the dream uh, and the dream that it's only the only state in the wilderness where a predator and prey of any race can live in peace. Hence the name, this city of a thousand colors. This is the only place? Pretty good. 
Grasmore is a savannah country that had been one of the colonies of Claville for two centuries before gaining its freedom in 7792. Grasmore is mostly inhabited by peaceful herbivore animals of exotic species. Interesting. Sounds like a nice place. Deborah, I'll see you later. Could I ask you a few more questions, Deborah? Feel free, Sonny. What do you got, Deborah? Uh, Deborah? Ah. What's up about you? I've Tell me about you yourself, about myself Deborah. Than I wanted to. Afraid you'll get your hands dirty? I'm afraid I already did. Hmm. What's up with Hotel Atlas? You think my whereabouts aren't a secret? Do you think they ever were? Well, I was hoping. Clawville is a big city. But not so big that Santino Featherland can hide in it. Oh, please. Flatter me more. So, Ibn Wessler, eh? You know you could have dropped the bomb a little earlier. If I started with that, I'm sure he would have thrown me out. You're right. He's one of the most dangerous gangsters in the city. I only know he's an influential businessman. Isn't that the same? Not even you can see the world as that black and white. Sonny, I've already told you what I know. I've never read the message. My job was to give it to you and nothing more. You really are this innocent, aren't you? I'm not sure I get what you mean. Let me give you some advice, sister. Leave the city and get as far as you can from the likes of Ibn Wessler. It's not so simple, Mr. Featherland. My mistress needs me. Is she really that important to you? That you drive around in the dead of night to questionable places to deliver messages you know absolutely nothing about? I would do more than that for her. I see. You're smooth. Real smooth. Thank you, Mr. Featherland. Sunny, please. Just Sunny. Interesting person. So this Natasha dame. Look, I'm just the messenger. You have to talk to my mistress about the details. Miss Katsenko was very clear on this matter. I see. But... Please, Sunny. Let's not make this even more uncomfortable. Okay, understood. Let's drop it. Thank you. Mm. All right. Oh, just uh, one more thing. Yes, Sonny? I don't want to sound indiscreet, but uh, this um, fur removal craze. Uh, do, you, uh, do you do this yourself, or are there specific parlors for it? Uh, well, um... Fair removal. <coughs> would, would, you, would you like to try it? I could get well, a little It wouldn't work as well with my feathers. Just professional Stop. curiosity. Stop. 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 You know, it's... Uh, Stop. 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 Occupational hazard? There are parlors, yes. But I do it for myself. And I do it for my mistress, too, if you're interested. That's, uh... Uh, good to know. Uh, thank you very much. You're one strange bird, Sonny Featherland. Well, I've been called worse. Hmm. Interesting. All right. Well, take care, talking to sweetheart. You. you too, Sonny. See you later, Deborah. I need to grab my stuff first. Ah, uh, what stuff do I need to grab? What do you want? I can always count on you. Thanks, old buddy. Hey, thanks, Lewis. D d d don't even mention it, my friend. Appreciate you, man. You got anything man. planned for today? I thought I'd visit a nightclub. It's n n n New Year's Eve, after all. Well, I didn't mean to hold you up. I'll I I ask a favor of you someday. <laughs> I owe you a lot of those, don't I? That, 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 that's true. I, I, I don't deny it. 
Behind that door lies the kingdom of dirty clothes, cigarette butts, and empty bottles. My bedroom. Sort of. Sort of? Ah, I need my gun. She doesn't seem so dangerous that I need to grab my gun, but you never know. You always need to grab your gun. My wallet and my badge. The wallet is real. The badge ain't. Chief Blood Boil took mine, so I got this one out of a pack of cornflakes, just in case. It's kind of an intimidation tactic. My sort last of thing. cigarette. <laughs> You're lucky I don't have a light, pal. Before I visit the club, I have to take a detour. I've got a feeling that this case isn't going to be a one-man job. And there's only one bird in this city I can trust. My ex-partner, Marty. Marty He's going to be chicken. at the station. I can only hope he'll be willing to talk to me. Main seats. Limited seats. Okay. Only open for a specific duration, so I'll, uh, I'll want to go to those when I can. Just determined by the main story progression. If you are a completionist, be sure to visit all of them before you move on to the next scene. Alright, let's go to Claville PD. Guess he still works at the station. It was New Year's Eve. And I was driving, half drunk, risking my whole life's work. But still, it didn't feel any different. Every day was the same. And the 121 days I had left till my retirement seemed like an eternity. When I look out the window of the hotel room I call home, I see the same thing every day. A woman in a red nightgown dances slowly in circles to smooth music the nine o'clock show with a glass of cheap bourbon and the red gown with the silent music. In the meantime, the proud city of Clawville is slowly eating itself alive. And we're still here with nothing left to lose but our sanity, while others, the smart ones, had already gone. Molly. Does her name really upset me this much? All those years of solitude, and I still jump without question every time I hear it. And then there's Marty, my ex-partner, who hates me. But I know I have to speak with him, no matter what. Why do I feel like the past is watching me on this goddamn night? Hmm. Chapter 1, Detour. I knew where to find Marty. At the station, we'd always draw straws about holiday duty. Marty never joined in. He always took the New Year's Eve shift, even though he had someone to go home to. I understood. Ten years ago, we survived the night the press called the Bloody New Year. Forgotten by Clawville, but not by us. We both left parts of ourselves behind that night. Hmm. Something happened then? Phil oh. The bullet hole in my crest is worth more than these two combined. I accidentally skipped through the dialogue. Oops. The bullet hole. Ah. You scumbags. Well, look at that. Hey, Sonny. What you scratching out over here? I heard the big boss threw you out. Tough luck, boys. I may not be on duty, but I'm still a cop, just like you. Well, more than you. Hey, you don't have to be so picky, old bud. By the way, you're on luck. Blood boils not in tonight. The lawyer's in charge. Mm. Oh, God. That clumsy buffalo is here tonight. If he doesn't end up in a cell again, he's lucky. <laughs> you got it. You looking for Marty, eh? I see you're still the brains around here, Phyllis. Yeah, I'm looking for Marty. Birds of a feather flock together. I see you're still the funny guy around here. 
You'll find the giant feather duster at the shooting range. As always. Hey, Royce. I'm telling you this because maybe you'll be able to understand. If this prickly shithead makes another racist remark, I'll strangle him with his own raincoat. <laughs> I'd love to see that. Hey, whose side are you on, you jerk? You're the one being racist. Kind of By the way, up. what's with the raincoats? Couldn't you find an umbrella? Why? Frank says it'll be rain, and see, that's raining. He's a frog, so he must know. Yeah, well, I'm a rooster, but I hate getting up early. Raincoats are just fine, okay. You have a problem with that, Sonny? No, just, uh, you know, the <laughs> spikes sticking through and all. Is something wrong with our spikes chucking? Yeah, you know what, just forget it. Don't you freeze, boys? It's cold outside. Yeah, truth be told, I'll freeze to my bones, Sonny. Even through this jacket, I'm completely soaked. It's probably really? because you're... I don't know why. Yeah, it's probably oh, because you're boys. poking and holes you. through it with your... You got nothing better to do. With your spikes. Bugger I don't off. know what's going on <laughs> with you. It's... Okay, okay. Just... <laughs> sometimes you two truly amaze me. All right, I'm out of here. Here we are again, Clawville Police Department. I've never been good at history, but if I'm not mistaken, this place has been a church, a hospital, and even some insane cult's secret hideout over the years. Anyway, the place holds the secrets of the ages and some drunk pigs in the basement. Busco and Mort. Bosco seems like a good cop. Detective Chow Hound Bosco. He thinks he's a real alpha, but nah, he's just a lap dog. Mort Mardigan, a notorious deadbeat. Poor guy's been blind since his teenage years, but that doesn't stop him from running into trouble. What the cluck did he do this time? Monica. Monica Rosen, receptionist in theory, but in reality, she's doing literally everything around here. Like the beating heart of the PD. She's too good for this place, even for this city. Hey, Monica. Hey, Monica. Hey, Boss Bird. What are you doing here? Shouldn't you be celebrating somewhere? Every day's a holiday since I got out of here. I can tell, but what are you doing here? Are you here for a file? You know, I'm a little busy right now. Yeah, you could look after a few things for me, but first, I'd like to talk to Mr. Big Beak McChicken himself. Those two prickly assholes told me he's emptying the magazines in the hole. Like always. And if he carries on like that, he's gonna use up all our ammo. So it would be nice if you drag him out of there. You know how this day is for him. <laughs> for him? You know I didn't mean it like that. Yeah, I know. Okay, so just sign here and you're good to go. Thank you, darling. Don't mention it, boss bird. Seems like some fucked up shit happened. Hey, Sonny, is everything all right? Sure, everything's fine, Mon. I'm just distracted. That's nice. Life is best if you let the adventures take you with them. <laughs> Jeez, Mon. Don't read so many romantic novels. That was one of yours, actually. From the old Sonny. You used to love saying nice little things like that, remember? I try not to. We can't erase the past because we are the past ourselves, am I right? Stop that right there. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm just joking. I like Monica. She's got a fire in her. What's up with the Tsar Club? What do you know about the Tsar Club? Nothing special. I've never been there. It's a famous place, though. Expensive cigars, unaffordable drinks, pretty gals. All the movie stars and politicians go there at least once a week. And all the big shot mobsters, too, I've heard. Yeah, I was saying the same thing. Interesting. What about Hotel Still Atlas? In the Atlas? If something works, why change it, right? Well, if you like it there. Listen, Monica, you could, uh, come by sometime. Monica, spend some time with me. Or two, you know? I like I your... I didn't hear that, and you I like your passion. 
Okay, uh, got it. Sorry. Uh, uh, Anything else, boss bird? Yes. Okay. Shut down. It's a little unfortunate. Do we have a file on Hobart, Ibn, Wessler? Are you kidding me? We have a whole room just for him. Want the key? You can spend the remaining days of your paid holiday in there. No thanks. Never mind. You're a bit sassy today, aren't you? I'm sorry, Sonny, but I'm starting to shed my feathers because of this insane asylum. You know, New Year's Eve and Blood Boil's not here when he should be. Somehow, I'm not sorry about that. Yeah, I bet you're not, Boss Bird. Natasha Katzenko. Hmm, interesting name. Is it real or just an alias? It's supposed to be real, but who knows? Good question. We have nothing on her. She's either clean or uses a fake name. Maybe both, but I don't think so. Aside from that, everyone knows what I know about her. Singer, star, the number one babe in this town, so to speak. Thanks, little bird. It's something. Glad I could help. Interesting. Yes, boss bird? Nothing. Uh, carry on. I'll, uh, I'll be fine. Just don't make a mess, okay? I love you, Monica. Poor old lizard. You've seen better days, haven't you? Yeah. What's up, Mort? Mort, you scabious beast. What the hell did you do? It's Morty to you, sonny boy. Everything's fine. There was just a bit of trouble in the bar, and someone got knocked on the head with a glass. It wasn't my fault. I'm as blind as a bat, am I right? <laughs> Did that ever bother you, Morty? Listen, sonny boy. Go tell them to leave me alone, eh? It's New Year's Eve, after all, and I didn't even do anything wrong. Not that wrong. Where's your little lapdog to get you out of this mess? Is that little pimp of a midget still sniffing around you? Uh, Jeff is a good That's boy, That's a little Sonny. fucked up, and Sonny. And good to me, believe me. Oh, God, spare me the details. When will you finally realize that little shit's been using you? Oh, of course he's using me. <laughs> what could a pretty boy like him want from this old monster? It's still sunny. I have no one else. Do you understand that? Don't you? Even you deserve better, pal. By the way, you look horrible, even for yourself. Are you feeling yeah. okay? Well, I'm not what I used to be. But neither are you, judging from your voice. But I'm seeing a doctor, sonny boy. I really am. Are you? Don't need to, Mort. I'm fine. Anyway, if Bubo prescribed you something, don't even think about taking it. I don't talk to that insane Fair owl. Now. Damn right. Please, say something on my behalf, okay? I really don't have time for this detective buffalo shit. Hey, careful with that. Buffalo Malloy is the chief today. <laughs> like I care. I'll try to speak for you, but keep it down till then, okay? You don't need this shit, and I don't need it either. Sonny boy, you've always been a good friend. <laughs> More like a clucking pigeon. Interesting. Basco, what do you have to say? Holy wild ones, look what the cat dragged in. Hello to you too, Bosco. I see you're busy as always. Yeah, little lap dog. I've been sniffing around one of the rundown joints. You know how it goes. And boom, this son of a lizard comes flying out the window. I didn't know the lizards could fly. <laughs> so, Mort was being a bad, bad boy again. Nothing unusual. And you, still dying? I'm still a cop for another 121 days, Bosco. It's as unpleasant to me as it is to you. All right, all right. No need to bite. I wasn't trying to mess with you. You have Moses and Plato for that. And of course, blood boil. Let's hope I won't run into any of them tonight. Looking for Marty, eh? 
Ever since you left, he's kind of lost. He's trying to hide it, but he's not the same bird. Well, I don't think we'll have a teary reunion thinking about how we parted. Let me give you some advice, Sonny. Let him rage. He'll be the same after that. Anyway, he was the one that shot you, right? You should be mad, not him. It's not that it's simple, Bosco. Me. But we'll see how he reacts. Thanks anyway. What the no hell? Worries, pal. What the hell did he shoot me? Honor, strength, unity. <laughs> For the love of the wild gods, I'm gonna be sick. Marty drinks this shit. I've never tried it, but I'm pretty sure it's gross and probably toxic. Seems pretty nasty. Officer Jardine. Officer Jardine. They say she's clever, smart, and dangerous. We need more of her kind in here. And what about Officer? Clark? One of Blood Boil's favorites. Mainly because he's a dog, of course. Hmm, racism. I'm really not in the mood to meet Deputy Malloy or any of my ex-colleagues from the Predatory Division. The Predatory Division, huh? Interesting. This is gonna be a hard ride. Last time we saw each other, he had a smoking gun in his hand and I was bleeding. I don't know how we can get past that, but it's worth a try. Hmm. Keep your... Got clean, Mr. Lawman. Wow. Hey, you. If you see, if you let the ammunition boxes open again, I'll kick your clucking ass. Long thighs and a big gun. That's Marty's idea of a perfect woman. <laughs> Can't blame him for it. Interesting. All right. Marty seems like a little bit of a bear. I was just about to go when you came in, so if you want shooting practice, Maybe turn on the lights first. You're right. I'm gonna do that. Are we just talking to each other like nothing? Hey, Marty. Marty's guns. Oh, wow. Oh, Susie. I know her well. Marty calls her Susie. And I have to say, this little she-devil pulled us out of many tough situations over the years. Interesting. What about Claudia? Claudia. Tiny, dark, and angry, and hits you where it hurts the most. Ah, uh, Linda is a loud one. I believe one. this piece is forbidden. Cops can't use it, but this is Marty's personal collection, so it doesn't matter. At least nobody has ever complained. Linda's crazy. Her Majesty Big Bertha. Or rather, Big Bertha too, because there was one before her. A sawed-off little broad, but we lost her in a swamp. Marty cried for a week, but once he saw this giant lady here, the balance of the universe was restored. Hmm. Poor Bertha. Ah, Marty. Marty looks good. Big and loud and angry as always. Ah, oh, man. Hey, Marty. Oh, well, look who's here. Hello, boss bird. Were you lost? This is the PD building, you know. Cut this shit, Marty. We're better than this. Well, at least you are. Better than anyone, huh? Marty, come on. Let's forget that. What's past is past. Uh, easy for you to say, Sonny. Damn it, Marty. You shot me, remember? I almost bled to death. Hell yeah, I remember. Unfortunately, my aim wasn't good enough. I need your help, okay? Why the hell That's did what you Marty hear. shoot me? Well, it's a start. Okay, I've said it. I won't do it again. Yeah, right. So, are you in? Just for tonight. Small case. We'll wrap it up in no time. Uh, what kind of case? A personal one. How personal? Very. The kind of case where if you come with me right now, you're not on duty anymore. Ooh, damn, Sonny. Stop it right there. I'm in. That's... that's it? Ugh. Do you know how boring life is here without your stupid, reckless shit? Soon enough, I'll shoot all the ammo in here out of boredom. Right, so tell me, what's it about? I'll tell you in the car. Ooh, can I bring Bertha? Ah, oh, for the love of... Marty, this is a routine case. You can't bring your shotgun, okay? Bertha stays. Okay, okay. But at least Susie can come, right? 
Uh, all right, Susie can come. Susie is That's more illegal than hear. Bertha. Ah, uh, Marty. Hey, Marty, what about Laura? How come she didn't eat you yet? Yeah, very funny. We're good, by the way. Mostly. As good as we can be after all these years. Glad to hear it. She asks a lot about you. Really? Yeah. She always hated you for getting me into trouble all the time. Understandable. But she also felt sorry for you. Oh, well, thanks. That's uh, much better. <laughs> if I'm <laughs> honest with you, she loved the chicken police, Marty, better than this one. Well, I think I'll take that as a compliment. Whatever, Sonny. Interesting. Having troubles with the wife. So, uh, Sonny, you still limping? The pellets tore my right hip to pieces. So, yes, the doctor says I'll limp forever. Ah, good to hear that. Fuck off. Can we go finally, or are you waiting for a big warm hug? The Let's hug get out would of here be before I get detained for gutting you. Ah, lovely and peaceful as always. Welcome back, boss bird. I would love a hug, though. All right, let's look at Marty's information. Unusual and hide and hide and wait for a foul. Shining white feathers. He shot me once, and I deserved it. I deserved it. We've been partners for almost ten long hard years. Well, we were, because now he's only helping me unofficially until I wrap up this case. Marty is a hothead with a hard fist, but he's loyal until the end and I can count on him in every way. Especially if the guns are in the picture. That's when he reveals his true self. And that's when I don't ever want to get in his way. Not anymore, at least. Marty's fiance is Laura. A beautiful, warm-hearted predator. I don't know what she sees in Marty, but he's too damn lucky to have such a woman for him. Interesting. I know more about Deborah. She lied to me. In many little things, the whole blackmail story she told me about should be taken with a grain of salt. Uh, interesting. Special feature. I hate him almost as I hate his uh, almost as I hate his partner, Phyllis. Interesting. Big and dumb. It resembles my partner, Marty, a little, except that Royce doesn't have a kind heart. They say he's able to devour anything that crosses his path. That's why he got the nickname Chowhound. Detective Boscarelli, uh, alias Bosco. He works in the predatory division as I do. Or as I used to, to be more precise. Interesting. She can watch over a thousand things at once. And she's an angel. I love her. The soul and heart of the police department. She's a hummingbird in theory, but many say she's a real angel who fell from the sky. When I used to come into the station daily, her presence was the sugar to my bitter morning coffee. Ah, dear Monica. Sometimes I feel like you're holding this whole place together. He's old and blind and an unrepairable wreck. Ah, light-fingered bastard. He's as blind as a bat, but also one of the biggest scoundrels this city has ever seen. He could have been a good guy, but got lost somewhere halfway. And now he's too old to save himself. There was some fight in a club where Mort was at. What a surprise. He's an old friend, so I can put a good word in for him. The chief is a real legend. He also hates me. Ah, Morphinus. Neurotic, old, and ugly. But he's an old friend from the golden days of the chicken police. Ah. Alright, what else do we have? We have Phyllis here. Interesting. Special feature. I hate him. A real little ass plug. He's too small of a fish in the ocean to be worth bribing. Hmm. Moses is, to, is a Tibetan sand fox, and Plato is a palace cat. They're old rivals of Sonny and Marty, currently working at the Clawville's PCPD homicide division. Interesting. Moses and Plato. Interesting. 
All right. Let's just, uh, turn them on. Let's go in for some shooting practice. Maybe we can, uh, get a hint. Aim your gun at enemies and avoid shooting the hostages. Simple as that. Shooting enemies increases your points and remaining time while hitting hostages does the opposite. It's all up to you. Nah, you'll need to reload your gun after six shots, just like in westerns, but even faster. All right. You. You. Uh, I gotta reload. How do I reload? Ah. Uh, oh, I gotta right click. Oh. Oh. Ah. Yes. Yeah, got bags. Ah. Ah, hostage. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Oh. Ah, oh, she's got a baby. No. Oh, God. Ah. Thank goodness that I was out of bullets. Oh my god. My points are insane. Ah, look at that. I score Marty Sonny. Wow, I was only like I was only a few away from do alright, I can beat him. I can beat him. Oh no! That's gonna hurt. All right, maybe we reset that one. Maybe we, maybe we, uh, I don't know. I'm doing worse. Bro, 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 bro. Leave the shooting range. Do it one more time. I'll try one more time. I'll try one more time. I could beat this time. I could beat it. I could beat it. There we go. Nice. Ooh. Nice. Dude, I think my score is amazing. Oh, what? Wow, I destroyed him. Get fucking wrecked, Muddy. Time to leave the shooting range. Hey, did you see what I did to your score? Can we go finally, or are you waiting for a big warm hug? Uh, I was hoping you'd have something to say Let's about that. Let's get out of here before... Ah, uh, you suck. I was just about to go when you came in, so... You're right. 
Yeah. Still drink uh, coffee. Out of here. Yeah, I only poison. Except for guns, of course. We could visit our old haunt. What do you think? Oh, I forgot it's on autoplay, right? Or we want it on autoplay. Auto oh, a nice cup of Zip's coffee in the hop dog. I'm in. Oh, and maybe we'll get into a little fight too, huh? Come on, auto, auto play, auto play, auto play. If it comes to that, I'm leaving you without a blink. Well, yeah, like last time. Those were uh, different times, Marty, with a different Sunny. Uh, well, all right, to the city then. You don't have to come with me, you know. Okay, okay, I know. Let's go. Sonny, there's a little problem. Why is the autoplay not working? Sonny, there's a little problem. Autoplay! I broke it! I broke the game with my awesome shooting. Not so little. God damn it. It smells too. What the furry hell is Blood Boil doing here? Ah, well, it seems we can't avoid speaking to him. Oh, yes, we can. You have your rifle with you, right? What? <laughs> Just kidding. Sort of. Yeah, maybe next time. I'm not in the mood to meet any of my ex-colleagues right now. Ah. Uh, Bosco. Oof, I gotta say, good old Bosco looks like shit. Yeah, like a beaten dog. While you, on the other hand, you just got older. Way older. Shut the clock up, Marty. Marty. You piece of shit. I see you're swamped, buddy. I've sent the old lizard away. I don't need him to foul the air anymore. I hate his kind anyway. What the hell is wrong with you, Bosco? Well, because he's a reptile. No, because he's a good-for-nothing piece of shit. No, oh, yeah, that's true. And you? Are you letting off some steam? Something like that. We'll go and check out some CD joint. We're cops, after all, ain't we? And this is still Clawville. That's true, pal. Protect and serve. Yeesh, got a room, you two. Ah, shut up, Marty. Yeah, buddy. I see blood boils here. We're in deep guano for sure, Marty. Guano is apparently batshit. That's something that I learned. Isn't it your lucky day, huh? Are you thinking about some stupid shit again? We? Oui? Excuse me, sir, but what do you mean? Great wilderness. Just keep a low profile, will ya? It's New Year's Eve. We have enough dangerous lunatics running around already. Don't worry, Chow Hound. We know what we're doing. Yeah, of course you do. That's what I'm afraid of. What have you heard about the Hop Dog? Is it still standing? I can't believe that I broke the autoplay. This is so unfortunate, now I have to click. Yeah, it is. But I don't frequent that neighborhood. You shouldn't either. Things have escalated there recently. Hmm. Obard Ibn Wessler. What do you know about Ibn Wessler? What's the old rat been up to lately? They say he's keeping a pretty low profile these days. But he's been seen in the company of the Attorney General. Attorney General Hamtaro, eh? Hamtaro? Oh, that's interesting. Thanks. Why are you so interested in that rat? If you want another hole in your comb, I could help you too, you know. It's just professional curiosity. I yeah, loved Hamtaro growing up. And I'm a fluffy little Labrador. Whoa, 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 you forgot to mention this nugget about the case, Sonny? Ibn clucking Wessler? What the hell did you get into? Far as I remember, you didn't let me tell you in the first place. Well, you're in now. No way back. You're a piece of shit, Sonny, you hear me? What's this all about? 
Easy, chicken. I'll tell you everything soon enough. Let's just get the hell out of here first. Uh, have I already told you it's a pleasure working with you again? No, but that's always good to hear, partner. Nah, tch, cluck off. Why is it so quiet in here? Shouldn't it be a madhouse by now? The midnight madness is yet to come, Sonny. Just wait for it. My time's too valuable for that, pal. And you're trespassing. Rules of suspension, remember? I can see you're up to no good. Who, us? Ridiculous. <laughs> if you say so. But I advise you to keep it low. Especially you, Sonny. How many days do you have until retirement? 121. 120 soon. Don't be a knucklehead and get yourself fired. 121. At least it wasn't one day from retirement, you know? Thanks for your eternal wisdom, Bosco. I'm definitely coming to you again next time. Still pretty close, all things considered. 121 days is a long the time. The Chief doesn't seem to be in a good mood. But he never is, actually. What a surprise. The two pigeons back together. And without my permission, of course. God damn it, Blood Boil, you broke that goddamn game. Chief Blood Boil. Damn. What was that, Santino? Nothing, sir. What a lovely evening. Am I right? I don't want to hear your crowing, Santino. What the hell are you doing here? Hey, 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 careful with the racist barking, old hound. Oh, oh, it's getting hot in here. Can we just skip this part? It's New Year's after all. And you're on duty, if I'm not mistaken, Martin. Where do you think you're going? That's it, boss, to serve and protect. Sonny was in the neighborhood and stopped by to say hi. He's a cop too, right? Only on paper, and you know that very well, Detective. I don't want any trouble, boss. I just wanted to say hi to Monica, and then this feather pillow showed up. I invited him to grab a quick coffee. You can allow him that much, can't you? Your coffee breaks usually end up in shooting or brawling, chickens. Oh, just a coffee, boss. You I miss swear. shirtless oh, me, have yeah. A heart. It's New Year's you Eve, and out. I haven't seen my old partner for so long. How touching. You shot him with a shotgun, if I remember. <laughs> Family quarrel. <laughs> for all the marrow bones of the world, get the hell out of my sight. Have a lovely evening, boss. You especially. Fuck off right now, Santino. What the f? I thought they only said Gluck in this game. Oh my god. What is it, Santino? N nothing, sir. And you need something, Martin? No, sir. Then get out of my sight, birds. Honestly, I have a really bad feeling about this. All right, what I might do, what I may do, what I may, I, I may, um, can I, can I load? Okay, where does, how do I save? <laughs> Look at these two simpletons. How do I save, guys? <laughs> they don't even realize their jackets are full of holes. For the wild God's sake, don't dare tell them. Oh, it works now, tried, never mind. But nothing happened. Figures. Hey. Hello, gents. Everything all right? Aye, uh, everything's just fine, Sonny. Well, look, the chick police are together again. What a time to be alive. Am I right, Royce? <laughs> You're right, Fosh. Hey, that reminds me. Look at what I found under my I coat. I thought you're not to bring it's that, Marty. It's Her Majesty Marty. Big Bertha in the flesh. Whoa, 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 don't shoot. We were just joking, okay? We don't want any trouble. <laughs> yeah, I was just joking, too. <laughs> I'll never get bored with these two. They're so cute. I wonder why they thought you would shoot at another cop. Hey, it's just happened once, okay? Am I right, boys? You, 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 you're right, Marty. Yeah. Um, we all know it was an accident. Well, it See? seems like it was probably on purpose. I don't know. 
For the crowd. Do it for the king. If it were up to him, only dogs would work at the PD. The racist old bastard. Blood Boyle is an asshole. We couldn't dress up that fact even if he wanted to. His only merit is that he's damn good at what he does. True. I guess he is keeping this whole institution together. When he retires, bam, the whole house of cards will crumble. Hmm. What is it, chickens? Look, Marty, the pincushion can talk. Amazing. Fuck off. Interesting. All right. What other information do we have? Special feature. The chief is a real legend. He also hates me. Yeah, we've seen him. He was my boss in the living statue of justice. He's tough, ruthless, and above all unbribable. And of course, he's a racist bastard. But still, I don't want to be here when he retires. To witness how chaos devours Clawville for good. We're gonna be in trouble. What about Zip? An old enemy who became a good friend over the years. Zip. This place is famous for its exceptional coffee and exceptionally frequent whims that take place around it. Well, it's not an assurance of life operating any joint outside of Roachtown. One of the most famous nightclubs in the city. Let's see that one. What's going on with this? The two-headed continent, Altera, and may not, may only be the second biggest of the three continents of the wilderness, but it's home to the most advanced and most influential states of the world, like Nautica, the Swostar Sardom, Averia, Vilsia, and Swalasso, Balbosia, or the Fraun Empire, and of course, Clawville, the city of a thousand colors. The Glover District, also known as the Hive or Roach Town, was once part of the city, but then became a walled-off ghetto, where 98% of the city's insect population is forced to live. Currently, the biggest threat to the city are the riots in the Hive that have almost driven the city-state to the brink of civil war multiple times already. Oh, God. This city's kind of fucked up. Yeah, what's going on here? I haven't dusted you off in a while, partner. Looks like I may be needing you now. It's been a little bit. Ironic, but ever since I've been on furlough, with only my fake badge sitting in my cabinet, I feel more like a cop than I ever had before. Mm. More like a Clawville cop, anyway. Oh, man, I totally get you. Hmm. We can't avoid speaking with the chief first. And it would be nice to say goodbye to Monica, too. Oh, we could talk to Monica. Sorry. I already talked to the chief, but Monica. When you left... When Blood Boil kicked me out, you mean? Yeah. So that affected even her. Why? Because she can do her job in peace, finally? <laughs> you know that's not what I mean. Yeah, I guess. Hmm. What do you mean? An angel in the form of a fragile little bird. Yep, that's her. We're leaving, sweetheart. Stay safe, boys. I'm glad to see you two together again. I'm afraid you're alone with that. Hey, don't make me change my mind. You won't, Marty. I bet you can't wait to get mixed up in some serious trouble again. Yep, that's true. I'm serious, boys. Be careful out there. We're big birds, Monica. We can take care of ourselves. Mostly. Okay, but take care of each other, too. Will do, Monica. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. All right. Now it's time to leave. We could go back to Hotel Atlas. Seems like there's a few things there. And the hot dog. Yeah. Might as well take Yeesh. a quick trip. My condolences, pal. I see your cleaning lady died. Yeah, she set foot in the bedroom once. I haven't seen her since. I didn't dare to go after her. Oh, I wouldn't want to go in there either. But what's that smell? Well, cigarettes and whiskey. 
Yeah, with a hint of dirty laundry, but no, this is lavender? Ah, that. Now, that's got to be the Ibanez dame. You know, the broad who gave me the letter. And the job, obviously. Ah, pretty, huh? I can smell it. She's an exotic, too. An Impala, maybe? Furry hell. That's why Chief Inspector Bloodboil hates you so much. He's, He's got jealous a nose because on. your nose is better than a clucking bloodhound. <laughs> the bitter old dog. He just hates all foul. Ah, true. Except for Monica. Monica's a fairy, not a bird. So, <clears throat> what now? Well, let's gather my stuff and head to the club. We gotta find out who this Natasha is and what she wants from us. I mean, what she really wants. After you, boss bird. I wouldn't like to touch anything in here anyway. If it's okay, I'll just stand around and stare out the window? <laughs> sure, just do it quietly. Hmm. When was the last time I was here? It's been a I while. Don't know. Years ago. When Molly left. Whew, that was a a wild night. Yeah. You know, Sonny, you can call me. Not just when you want to investigate some shady case from a shady dame and you need a big meat shield to cover your ass. Times have changed, Marty. And I don't call anyone. All right, all right, boss bird. Whatever you say. Hmm. Have you been there before? Uh, never. You know, it's not my style. It's too fancy for me. I'm more like the smoky, smelly, ramshackle little joint type. Yeah, same here. But we're not gonna mingle like this, right? We're not searching for a tailor on New Year's Eve, okay? We'll go as we are. That'll be exciting. Let's just stay out of trouble, okay? What trouble? That's the spirit. Mm. What about so Deborah? she just turned up with a message on this flyer, and you fell for it? Maybe I was bored. Or maybe there's more to this thing than meets the eye. Yeah, there's always more. Maybe I just wanted to meet you, for old time's sake. That's not funny. <laughs> I've never had a good sense of humor. You know that better than anyone. That's for sure. So the Czar Club, huh? My city's on fire. Sounds good. But that's all? It's kind of weak for a clue. It's not a clue. It's just a guide. By the way, it's New Year's Eve. We deserve some fun, right? Well, that's true. But it's never that easy with you, Boss Bird. There's something you're not telling me, right? Nothing important, Marty. Ah, uh, yeah. If you say so. Hmm. He doesn't know that the message came from Molly. My Magnum. Oh, hi, Mr. Sinclair. How are we? Sinclair is doing fine, thanks. Anyway, you still talk to your guns? <laughs> yeah. And so what? Other animals talk to their plants. Crazy, isn't it? At least a gun has a soul. And it's useful. I can't believe you're allowed to walk around freely, Birdie. Oh, if you only knew what I'm packing right now. I don't want to know what's under your feathers, Marty. Jesus Christ. So, am I staring quietly enough? Well, the floor's creaking a bit when you shift your weight, so, uh... You're an asshole. <laughs> I suppose two shots was enough for today. At least until we learn what this Natasha woman really wants. Hmm. What did I come back here to do? Mm, go to my bedroom? To it up. It'd go well with this rundown neighborhood. It may it's be just rundown, kind of a, but somehow you know, I still conversation feel like about it's stuff or, uh Sure. You could live in Cockroach Town. That's an honest place, too. Has a similar stink. Believe me, Marty, I thought about it. Uh, why am I not surprised? Cockroach Town. Gotta love Cockroach Town. All right, well, uh, I don't really have anything else Just to do here, of... right? Let's 
Let's go to the hop dog then. The hop dog was like the last warning. You can still turn back. My eyes lingered on the sign. An enormous dog. Like a neon god with limitless power over cheap hot dogs, plastic hamburgers, and watered down coffee. The cold light called me. But I didn't want to get out of the car. If we went in, we were all going to be pancakes, kept together by cold syrup. Marty's worried look shook me out of my reverie. Oh, cluck. Was I talking to myself again? I think I'm talking to myself again. What's up, fly guy? Look at the poor bastard. He's looking okay, Marty. Remember what we saw when we worked at the Hive? Wild ones. Don't even remind me. I'm trying to forget that shit every day. It's been even worse since. I guess you heard about the riots. Who hasn't? You know, people are afraid that the Great Fire will happen again, and those hive houses are pretty flammable. I don't speak of the devil, Marty. But to be honest, I... I have no idea how this insect matter can be solved. The Great Fire! I do. Is this an we inside just open job? the ghettos and let the insects live among us like they did for centuries. Your heart is pure gold, buddy. But you know it's not that easy. Clawville isn't what it used to be. The there used to be such life around here before it became an insect ghetto. That was a very long time ago, Marty. I was a little chick, and the hop dog had the best pancakes in the entire city. Well, since Zip became the owner, the cook, and the waitress, I imagine it's all gone downhill. <laughs> True. But at least the coffee's good. That's right. I have no idea what that mongrel's doing with it, and I don't want to know. But its aroma is unbeatable. Hey, pal. What's up, fly guy? Oh. Oh. Is he deaf? I don't know. Maybe he just doesn't understand. I forgot what I'm it was saying. on autoplay. Or he doesn't want to. That's also very likely. What is this? Fly in the soup. Meredith H. Marble. This is a chicken police story. Oh, God. Can we read that? The Great Fire of Clawville. Not after the meat, uh, not long after the meat war and the following economic crisis in 18, er, in, uh, 893, a fire almost destroyed the entire city of Clawville. Originated in the Ratwell district, not even the River Times was able to stand in its way. It was a fiery hell, it was fiery hell and garbage, after which the city had to be built up again, like almost from scratch. Goddamn. He used to be a small time criminal, but the underworld pushed him out. Now he makes the best coffee in the whole city in a run down roadside rest area. Oh, and he also proved to be a rather useful police informant. Warning. We don't serve bugs of here. Oh, that's furry. Is this still a thing? A racism. The situation's getting even worse, Marty. Have you heard how the young mothers of the Cobbler District are forced to make a living? I have no idea what goes on in the hive, Sonny. They just committed a racism. But you're still gonna tell me, right? Prostitution is the lesser evil. What's worse is that some folks have to sell their kids when they're still larvae. Wait, what? Why? They pay a hefty sum for each of them downtown. They sell Jesus them Christ. gourmet food in the most expensive restaurants. Oh my oh, God. I'm gonna be sick. We made this city, Marty. Clawville didn't do this to itself. Don't ever forget that. My god. Ugh, the place is deserted. Poor Zip. You're right. Yep, the guy's middle name is Bad Luck. That's for sure. Yeah. What's going on? What's playing on the jukebox? Break me. For a handful of, he of feathers. So, Western song or. 
Dead fly, tail no tails. This is a uh, dead fly, tail no tails. Hmm. I like it. What about for a handful of feathers? Get a bite of me, baby. My city is on fire. about a shadow of a doubt. What about this one? This one is pretty jazzy. Billy J. Blackmore and the brand new album Break Me. Ah! Alright. Destin Mavis. Fly with me, baby! And voila! The master himself. What a finch. Eh, uh, Sonny, he's a pigeon, not a finch. Don't make me angry, Marty. Okay, I was only joking. A new star of rock and In roll. another life, I'd love to be a rock star. <laughs> You're already one, Monty. For me. Ah, oh, thanks, boss. Yeah, hey, don't take it. Kids these days and their crazy music. What would old M.B. Davis say to this garbage? M.B. Davis. That feels like a bit. That feels like a play on Miles Davis. What are they trying to say? The highlight of my day. Gold coffee. Yeah, I can smell it already. How does he make the coffee here so special? Look at that mangy trash panda and tell me, do you really want to know? Um, you're right. As always. Doodles. Fuck the kid. What insight. Wow. Where are all the colors well, go? that's a good question, pal. You know what? I was thinking the same thing. You know, you know, you know, you know, you know. You know. You still don't eat meat, old man? I'm a rooster, a chicken. Why the hell would I eat meat? I don't mean real meat. I'm not a lunatic. But a meat substitute? There's about 10 different kinds. Have you never tried any of them? Why would I? If I don't eat meat, why would I eat a substitute? Because you can. That's the point. Wild gods, Marty. Stop being such a sheep. Do you fall for those adverts? Substitute isn't meat, Sonny. And if it's tasty, why wouldn't I eat it? I don't care what you eat. But don't be surprised when you lose all your feathers or you try to bite off your own leg one day. Hmm. Almost ham and tomato. Quasi meat and cheese. Oh, but bacon and chocolate. Bacon and chocolate. Sounds like a good combination, actually. Sounds delicious. Ooh, a nice pancake with hemp seed, oh, chocolate, and black onions. I'd rather have somebody pull my beak oh, off. Uh, you used to be more daring. Yeah, oh, I'm I so angry. Didn't it either. Uh, it's depressing being around you, boss bird. Ooh, maybe a peanut souffle with faux meat. Oh, stop it, Marty, before I get sick. Ugh, yeah, you're just a boring old man. I'd rather be boring than dead. My god, this is making me hungry. The door didn't look like this last time. Yeah, because last time you tore it out and beat that baboon with it. 
Oh yeah, I remember now. So that's why Zip remodeled the whole down. place. Uh, we had no, to. We didn't leave much pretty of it fucked up still. If I didn't know how nice we are, I'd almost hate ourselves. Welcome to the club, partner. Little self hate. All right, I'm gonna leave you with the jazzy music for a bit. I'm gonna go get myself a a drink and a and a and a, and a maybe a snack. I don't. I, I don't know. We'll see. All right, guys. I got myself a bag of pepperoni, and uh, and and I got myself a drink, cause it fits the vibe. Water it down with simple syrup a, a little bit. It gets a little wild. What's up? He Sim? sure didn't get any younger. Or prettier. You think he's still mad at us? Frankly, Marty, I don't give a damn. Hello, uh, boys. Now get the hell out of here while I'm asking nah. nicely. Hey, hey, is that how you greet two old friends? Hey, I'm not joking, Sonny. I got a shotgun under the bar. No, you don't, because if you had, we'd arrest you here and now. If there's still life in you when you're full of buckshot. Ah, it's going well so far. We're just here for a coffee, Zip, okay? Like old times. Nothing's like old times. Haven't you noticed? Yeah, as a matter of fact, it's quite noticeable. Shit. All right. And where'd you blow in from? The detective needs a We haven't been anywhere snack. yet, but we're going somewhere. Everybody's going somewhere, right? Tell me, how much do you know, Zip? That depends. How deep is it? Bottom of the well kind. Goes down around Ibn Wessler. Holy hell, Wessler? You've dipped your wings in deep shit, boys. If you've got anything on him, don't keep it to yourself. We'd be grateful. Grateful? Maybe you're not gonna trash my joint this time, eh? Eh. You know, Ibn's acting strange nowadays. He always believed that if you want something done, you do it yourself. That's how it was for years anyway. And? But now, he left his real estate, the fish racing clubs, the casinos, and the bars to his right-hand man, Mongrel Mick. And ever since, he's been kind of weird, bottomed out, brooding in the seediest joints of the city. Nobody ever knew him to be like this. Weird, huh? Yeah, weird. Do you think it's about a lady? It's always about a lady. Well, there is a woman. I knew it. But not like you think. Is this gonna cost much? Only a favor, like the good old days. Okay, I'm in. The good old days. 
All right. That Natasha's a mysterious woman, a real cursed jewel, if you ask me. She came out of nowhere two or three years ago and landed on the stage of the millions almost immediately. Is that so? Interesting. Yeah, she's got a fantastic voice. Makes men go crazy. But we all know that's not what's important. Then suddenly, bam! She got the whole club. Just like that. But we know exactly how it was. I can imagine, yeah. Since then, it operates under the name The Czar Club, right? The old click is still clicking, right? Yeah, the club was renamed and remodeled. Everyone knows she was Ibn's lover, but she's not your usual canary. She didn't get involved in Ibn's dirty dealings. Then how exactly does she fit into the picture? Check this. A few months ago, the old rat pulled out of his own businesses and gave control to Mongrel Mick and his mob. Mm. Mongrel Mick? Doesn't sound familiar. Mick the Marauder ring a bell? Damn, that little monkey came this far? Uh, I think that little shit took advantage of Ibn not being himself. Which has something to do with this Natasha, right? That's my guess. Thanks for this straight dope, Zip. We owe you one. One? You owe me the price of a new coffee shop, remember? Okay, okay. Whatever you need. Just call us. I cluck and will. Thanks, pal. Hey, I'm not your pal, Marty. I'm not your friend, guy. Yeah, what do you have to say about the Sar Club? Have you ever been to that place? Of course, a hundred times. Everyone who matters in this city's been there. Sorry, guys. But then, it had a different name and a different owner. Business affairs, right? Yeah, that was the dark era, Sonny. I don't want to talk about it. Roger that. Mm. I've got to say, you've revamped the joint pretty well. Yeah, after you trashed it, I had to. Look, I'm, uh, I'm sorry, Zip. That ocelot and his gorilla. Baboon, not gorilla. Whatever. Sonny, <clears throat> watch your beak. So you owe me one until about the end of time. But I'd settle for you washing up here for a few years after retirement, Sonny. Mind your tongue, for a ball. Ha! <laughs> ah. So, Ibn's gone Where's insane. Ibn? Love will kill you in the end, they say. Seems like everyone's in a poetic mood today. You're one to talk, by the way. Huh? Why? So, about that woman. Is she really that dangerous? <laughs> what woman isn't, huh? No, Zip. I mean, really dangerous. She's got the most influential gangster of the city wrapped around her finger. She calls him her little fur ball. How dangerous do you think she is? Hmm. What's up with you, Zip? You didn't get any younger, pal. You're telling me? You look like you haven't had a good night's sleep since forever. To be honest, I've never had a good night's sleep in my life. <laughs> You will when the big sleep comes. And what are your plans? Dying behind the bar? Of course. You got a better idea? A couple, yeah. But somehow this suits you. You know what? Your mother's a goat. How dare you, she's a rooster. You sure talk a lot. And maybe the past is haunting me. Once a rat, always a rat, right? Aw, oh, come on, Zippy. Don't be so hard on yourself. You got out in time, and you've been living an honest, ordinary life since then, haven't you? Yeah, right. How lucky am I, eh? It's more than what many others get, believe me. All right. I think we got what we wanted to know, then. Let's go ahead and leave this place. Just a kind of recap. Natasha. She was the singing sensation of the millions and beca later became the owner, under Evan's patronage. Not much is known of her past before this, though. Alright. What about Evan? He's been acting quite strange lately. 
as if he's trying to withdraw from his own shady businesses to live a simple life with simple pleasures. Now, nah, it wouldn't be a problem in itself, but it just isn't like him. Maybe he's being forced to do it. What about Zip? An old enemy who became a good friend. Zip is getting old. He still has his connections. It's worth questioning him about everything. But time had his way with him, too. Zip was delivering information to Evan until a couple years ago. He was already working as a police informant then, so he may have been reporting to both sides. This sneaky little bastard. What's going on in the Codex? Meat substitutes. Meat replacement or meat substitute foods made it possible to reduce meat consumption, predation, and domestic cannibalism in the whole wilderness. These products are widespread nowadays and are not only popular with predators, but all kind of animals. Mick is one of the most infamous henchmen of Ibn Wessler, known by many rather scary nicknames thanks to his cruel nature. Sonny and Marty have crossed paths with Mick before, but it took a lot of effort to get, that, uh, get out of those encounters with feathers and debt. Ah. Alright, let's go ahead and uh, head to... Uh... Hmm. Did we need to do anything in Hotel Atlas? I didn't really know. Let's go to the Sar Club. It's probably just time to head straight there, right? Midnight had passed, and the intoxicated madness kicked in. We could only crawl along Shalva District's main streets toward downtown. The city's heart beat differently. Ancient buildings were defaced by neon signs and billboards, like half-drunk lovers on a fine leather sofa. Great old houses neighbored by garish modern blocks. A place that makes the head hurt. The Tsar's huge neon sign was visible for miles. A blazing red sign advertised tonight's main attraction, the amazing Natasha. Uh, cops were never welcomed at places like this. I hoped we were too late for the show. We had to be inconspicuous, but it was never easy with this bird mountain by my side. So this is the famous Czar Club. More like infamous, Marty. It's not for our kind, that's for sure. And I don't mean that they don't like foul here. Well, at least we don't have to be afraid that they see you as a detective, boss bird. Very funny, Marty. So what are we gonna do now? We find Natasha, the broad who sent me the message, remember? But first, we need to get into the club. And Marty, please, don't monkey this up. Excuse me? On behalf of the well-respected and noble primate community of Clawville? Cut the crap, Marty. Let's focus on what we're here for, okay? As you say, boss bird. Being a scoundrel, Marty. Lewis, what are you doing here? That's your old friend, right? Wait, what was his name? Uh, Lawrence? Lamar? No, Liam. Lewis. Yes, it's him. To be honest, Sonny, I always thought that guy's not all there in the head. Nobody's perfectly sane in Clawville, Marty. But if not for this old rabbit, I wouldn't be here today. I'll never forget that. Should I thank him for that? Or kill him for it? You're reading my mind, boss. Hmm. Honestly, I think these types of women only see faceless tuxedos, cufflinks, and wallets. And in the mirror, they're just brooches, necklaces, and earrings. Don't be so radical, Marty. They're women. They live by different rules. Hmm, that was kind of deep. It's not. Just bullshit. There's more where that came from. A lot well, of bullshit. Teach me, master. When you're old and wise like me, you'll realize none of it is worth a damn thing. Wait, that was deep again, right? Maybe it was, Marty. Maybe it was. Amazing. I'm 14 and this is deep. Sonny, my dear friend. Hi, Lewis. This is my partner. But I'm sure you already know. You have no idea how happy I am to meet you, Mr. Marty. I'm a 
big admirer of your work. Pleasure's all mine, Lawrence. Lawrence? <clears throat> Anyways, so the legendary chicken police back together? <laughs> Isn't it amazing news? Don't ruffle my feathers, Lewis. Those days are long gone. We're just here for the entertainment. Or something like that. I see. Well, that's a shame. See you inside? I have something to do, my f f f f f pal, but I'll try to make it for the main event. Okay, then. Catch you later, pal. Let's not bother her. Okay, boss. Let's not bother him again. Yes, sir. Ah, oh, fancy guy. Look at that. Isn't that the new... It is, Marty. A brand new 942 Silver Hawk. Haven't seen such beauty since I left Averia. Of all that's furry, whose is it? Maybe it's Ibn Wessler's. I guess he's no paper tiger. Yeah, he sounds like a fellow who drives around in one of these. Lucky bastard. Hmm. What about this bouncer? Jeez, look at that guy. That's not a guy. That's a demon. Straight from the dog-eared pages of a cheap detective novel. Yeah, I bet his name's Bill. Is that a yeah, spider? He's definitely a Bob. Five bucks for Bill? Okay, I'm in. He's a Bob. No way he's a Bill. Howdy, pal. What's your name? Gentlemen, how can I help you on this wonderful Oh, it's night? a ram. We're expected in the VIP lounge. My apologies, but I don't remember ever seeing you gentlemen here before. May I ask? Stop right there, big guy. I get it. Yeah, I know exactly how this works. So what do you have to do to get in? Nothing's easier, sir. Are you on the list? The list? Yeah, I'm, uh, uh... Oh, don't tell me you forgot. I'm afraid I did, Marty. Sorry, big guy, but I'm pretty sure we're not on the list tonight. That's a shame. I'm really sorry, sirs. In that case, you can't come in. What's your name? Yeah, right. Oh, thanks. My pleasure, gentlemen. Are you up? Bill or a Bob or a Nat or a, what? What are you? Look, I really don't want any trouble, but it is even more inconvenient for me, sir. But this place doesn't like uh, coppers. Forgive this line. I can't let just anybody in, and there are some I'm strictly forbidden to. Please, you have to understand. Listen here, you cow. Do you have any idea who we are? You ever read the papers? Of course, I know who you are, sir. I get the news and more. And I must admit, it's an honor oh. to meet you in person. Mr. Santino Federland and Mr. Marty Machikin. The Bell of the Pantheres is one of my favorite books. Oh my god, not the books again. So it would be terribly inconvenient for me if I had to use force on you, gentlemen. What, what did you just say? Relax, Marty. This guy has chicks like you for breakfast. Uh, thanks for the information, pal. Uh, have a nice night. Thank you for understanding, gentlemen. And forgive me for my austere composition. No problem, Shakespeare. Say, big guy, yeah, you know Lewis. Mr. Lewis Hayworth? But of course, Mr. Hayworth is an impeccable gentleman. And also a frequent visitor of the club. Is that so? Good to know. And? I'm afraid that is all, Yeah, I monsieur. like this guy. I enjoy this man. What can you tell me about the first about lady of the What's place, big Natasha? guy? Uh, you mean Miss Natasha Katsenko, sir? You're right on point, pal. Nothing you don't know already, sir. Just try me. Well, she owns the place. And, uh... That's it? Well, that's, uh, <clears throat> unbelievable. Pardon, monsieur, but I'm not permitted to say anything more. Hmm. Well, not much we can Just do, then. one more thing. Uh, this list of yours, uh, where should we sign up again? I'm afraid if you don't know, it's not my place to tell you, sir. Uh, Excusez-moi, uh, the regulations, you know. 
You hear that, Sonny? I do, Marty. I do. I'm gonna lose my crest from this guy. Just wait. Just don't get too excited, Marty. This Not is tonight. the guy. He's a anyway, pretty uh, nice thanks, dude, pal. actually, Marty. I don't know. I don't know if you should... He's a, he's a, he's a good fella. How the hell am I the one who lost my one top day license? Neon oh, my under suspension. will cover the whole world, I'm telling you. You read that in some kind of science fiction book? No, it's just what I think. Oh, so you have your own thoughts now. The world's really moving forward. Pluck off, Sonny. Hmm. Advertisement. Huh. I like this. Why is that? I don't know. Because it's moving, I guess. You're a simple bird, aren't you? Yes, I am. Voice of the people. Epur si muave. Oh, bless you. It means, mm. and yet it moves, bird brain. An old wolf named Galileo said that. Oh, I see. And what did he mean by that? Eh, dunno. I think there was something wrong with his stomach. Ouch. Do you remember the when the Clawville Chronicle was a really high-quality newspaper? You mean when they wrote something about us daily? Hmm. Yeah. What exactly happened to them? Oh, they got bored with us, Marty. And to be honest, so did I. But still, here we are working together again. Funny, huh? Yeah, hilarious. That fella's built like a brick shithouse. I don't think we'll be able to just sneak past him. Wanna bet? Not today, Marty. Remember, we must avoid suspicion. Ah, okay, okay. No trouble. I get it. It's okay, Bertha. Maybe next time. What was that? Uh, nothing. Just the wind. Put that Can thing you away, bring Marty. Big Bertha with you. Marty, God, I told you no. not what to. What are you thinking? What idiot would bring a shotgun to a club? Was that a rhetorical question? Mm, the most colorful club and of the most colorful city. My city is on fire. Brand new hit from the Queen of the Night. Uh, you know, seeing this, I can't wait for the show. The girls? New Year's Eve's once a year, right? And we're not on duty. Have I asked how Laura's doing? Whoa, hey, I, <laughs> I was just kidding, okay? My relationship with Laura is unwavering, like the rhino beauty on this picture. Interesting taste you've got. Feathers, scales, or dermal armor, a lady's a lady, my friend. Thank the wild gods for self-sacrificing gentlemen like you. Hmm. My city is on fire. This is it. It was on the flyer from Deborah. Maybe we'll get to hear it, if we're unlucky. From none other than our secret employer, Natasha Katsenko. Ah, a job with benefits, huh? Uh, don't be tasteless. Oh, I get it now. The title. Do you think it's about the Great Fire of Clawville? Did you ever think of being a detective? Ah, very funny. Ah. Interesting. How are we gonna get inside of here, actually? I... Now that I think about it, I don't Is know Lucas if... Lewis. And yes, he's got the whole Chicken Police book series. Damn his taste. Lewis is a good guy. Jeez, look at that guy. That's no way we're guy. getting around him. That's a demon. Uh, where should we go now? Can't seem to get inside, so, uh... Anyway. Averia. A country inhabited exclusively by birds. It's picturesque, modern place governed by a democratic parliament. It's bordered by two seas, and its economy is built mostly on air transport, commerce, and its aerial military. The country's on neutral terms with almost every other nation, except for the Great Meat War. It kept this standpoint all throughout known history. The Claville Chronicle is the most read and highest quality newspaper in the city. It's so famous that also that it's also being read beyond Claville's borders, and not just in the colonies. 
This was the paper that first published an article about the two heroic roosters, aka the Chicken Police. The article was written by Timothy Saltwater, the seagull journalist who became somewhat of a legend himself. Interesting. Well, where do I go now? It seems like we can't seem to really get inside of, uh, of this place. So, uh, I don't know where we go. Who should we, like, go back to the... Should we go back to Clav LPD? How many days did we have our first squad car? About three, I think, before we crashed into that tank of acid. We? <laughs> you crashed it. Don't blame it on me, Marty. I was unconscious, if I remember correctly. And that's your problem, boss. You should be more careful with low-hanging concrete blocks next time. Yeah, I've been paying attention to that ever since. Hmm. Hey, Monica. Remember that invitation from the other day? Oh, yeah. I'm so sorry, Marty. I'd love to, but I've got a lot of work to do. You know how it is. Please tell your sweetheart that I'm sorry. Okay, okay. I understand. No problem. We'll meet at the annual party anyway, right? Yeah, that's true. I'll tell Laura. I have a strange feeling that we'll meet again tonight. Strange. I have that feeling, too. That's weird. I was just thinking the same thing. Huh. We have Seems no like business. foreshadowing. What is it, Santino? N nothing, sir. And you need something, Martin? No, sir. Then get out of my sight, birds. I have a strange... That's weird. What is it? No, and you, no, then get. Hmm. Hey, listen, Bosco. I wanted to ask you this for so long. <laughs> Can I pet you just a little? One more word, and I'll bite off your arm. Oh, hey, hey, easy. I'm just kidding. Guys, I'm really gonna miss this when I retire. I already asked about the hey, question, Bosco. I wanted to ask you this for so long. Can I pet you? Just a uh, little one more. Oh, guys, yeah. sounds like that's the end of his dialogue. Uh, I still don't really know exactly what I need to, Time to go, do partner. here. It'll take. Look, Marty. I know, I know. We were not. Oh, do you have any gum? Of course not. Chickens don't chew. Well, I'll go crazy on a long ride without it. And I'll go crazy from you beaking it. Ah, Sonny, it's a pleasure working with you again. Well, I showed up here, but uh, it doesn't seem like I'm able to really get on the list. Uh, how the hell am I Let's gonna get in? Let's just not do that, shall we? Okay. I ask him more questions. Maybe Jeez, if I look, look at him. At that. That's not a guy. That's a demon. Yes, gentlemen. Hey, big guy. Uh, what's your name again? Is it? Uh, My name is Archibald, sir. Archibald Closest Conway. Closest to Bob. Definitely well, over, over Bob. Bill. Excuse me, monsieur. Archib... What? No way. That's not even a real name. I'm sorry to disappoint you, sir, but uh, my name is Archibald Conway, without any doubt. Blackjack Conway to my friends. Hello, well, sir, to thanks, Bob Blackjack. and a bell, I thought. It was a pleasure. We'll be on our way now. Uh, Say, big guy, you. is this your job? To stand in front of the club and keep out decent fellows like us all night? Mm, not entirely, monsieur. My employer has many other kinds of jobs for me. He is quite creative in his field, I must say. Like? Like what? Exactly. Sorry, monsieur. I'm not, uh... Permitted to say anything more about the matter. Regulations, yeah, I know. Uh, this bullshit just gave me a headache. So sorry to hear that, sir. He's a nice guy. Anyway. Uh, I guess I have something to read about him now. Big as a mountain, talks like a poet, smells like a barn. 
This boulder standing guard in front of the entrance to the SAR club. He probably reports straight to even Wessler, not to mention he's exceptionally well educated and has an elaborate vocabulary. I like let's him. Just, let's just oh, okay. I like him a lot. He's a good dude. There's nothing that I could probably do at the hop dog unless maybe I can go ask Zip or whatever about him. Doesn't What's seem this like it. No insects allowed shit. You're not like that. What do you think? If I let one in, all of them will follow. And then I can forget my regular clientele for good. What clientele? There's no one here. That's it. Would you take even that away from me? If anything, a lot better business. What's this? No in. What do you. What? That's it. Uh, it doesn't seem like I need to be here. I'm a little confused. I don't know exactly where I should be right now. I could go back to Hotel Atlas. Not really anything here, though, right? Other than I suppose cheap two whip. shots was enough for today. At least until we learn what the. It doesn't seem like My Marty has anything. I could ask. Nah. You have what we came for? I just want to look around a little. I'm ready. Yeah. All right, Sonny. Then grab your map and let's hit the road. Sure, but what are we doing once we hit the road? It doesn't seem like we're able to do anything else here at the Czar. Ah. Tonight? Maybe we'll be on the front page once again. Oh, God forbid. Et pour si moave. Oh, bless it me. Oh. Eh, dunno. Ouch. I've already read that one. What a beautiful co a work of art. Seeing it and thinking about my little rusty cupboard <laughs> breaks my heart. Ah, uh, don't torture yourself, Sonny. Only way we're ever gonna drive one of them is if we sign up for the mob. Maybe it we may be need worth to it. do that. I think to we'd get be those great club. gangsters. I don't know. It seems like. Life. Seems like kind of the first thing that we need to be doing here. Maybe we could talk to Lewis. Look, Lewis that bouncer ah. over there. Well, yes. He is a bit intimidating, but his manners are impeccable. Am I right? Yes, indeed. But it seems tonight we're not on his list. Oh, I see. Uh -oh. oh, I get it. I get it. <laughs> You'd like to go in, but he won't let you. Yeah, something like that. No, 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 no problem at all. Come with me. I'll t t talk to him. Much obliged, pal. Yeah, thanks, Bunny. Excuse me. Ah, oh, jeez, what the hell's wrong with you, Marty? What? Did I say something wrong? He's a rabbit, Marty. Come on. It's demeaning and you know it. Sir, how'd you do? Everything's fine, Mr. Aworth. Good. <clears throat> Uh, look, this noble pair of p p pigeons are my friends. They're on the list, okay? Merci la mon, sir. And as for you, <clears throat> you owe me one, gentlemen. Thanks, old pal. It was my p p pleasure to help you, as always. Appreciate it, Lewis. The jazz overwhelmed us. There was no band in sight. Yet the music seeped from the walls like years of cigarette smoke and the smell of spilt whiskey. Behind the bar, rows of fancy bottles reflected the harmonious voices of pretty dames and the clinking of crystal glass. It was the kind of place that makes you drunk, even if you've never had a sip. A dangerous place for someone like me. No matter how alien I felt, it was strangely like coming home. Welcome to the Tsar. Well, here we are. Here we are. Mother of... I take you to the nicest places, eh, sweetheart? Oh, does it mean you're buying, honey? Don't even think about it. Ah, oh, men these days. So, we're here to find a dame called Natasha. I have a hunch she won't be hard to find. Let's mingle and try to avoid suspicion. Just like always. No, Marty. Not like always. This time, it's for real. Hmm. 
She has Waitress. pretty long legs. I mean, pretty and long legs for a squirrel, but I don't want to be prejudiced. We're not here to stare at pretty squirrels. We're here to investigate, remember? Hmm. Where are you? Hey, there's Filmar. Who? Oh, yes. Ah, uh, the Phil owl. Because that's uh. what he calls himself, right? You know him well? We had some seriously wild cases together, yes. Mainly in Averia, way before Clawville. Another place and another life. Sounds good. Like the blurb of some cheap pulp fiction book. Yeah, it was the exact opposite. But the old bird's worth saying hi to. Now, oh, what's up, Phil Mar? Well, well, if it isn't the great detective, Marlowe. Blow me, Sonny. You know I don't use that name anymore. Okay. Mr. Dumbass Alias, Phil Marlowe. So says someone who tried to go undercover with a Feather Pillow Mafia is a turkey. Right, Mr. Turk Cayman? Hey, that was a long time ago. I was young. And I Stay stick to my principles and my stupidity. Have Phil a good Marlowe dinner. and that's that. Don't rile me up, you old fart. Okay, okay, fair enough. Sorry, I'm a little clucked tonight. Hey, Waddles. Uh, I know the feeling. Hey, do it. By the way, what are you two doing here? You stick out a bit. Are you here for a good old fashioned beating? We stick out. Man, you look terrible. Like someone who sat on an electric pole. Don't even ask. I feel exactly like that. Mm. You want a case? Five feet tall, half of that legs, angelic voice, demonic eyes, just the usual. Oh boy. You? Something like that. Just don't know the exact numbers yet. A dame named Natasha. She called us here. If I'm not mistaken, the joint is hers. Yeah, she owns the joint, amongst others. Well, good luck, guys. That broad has a reputation. She's not the kind to toy with, if you know what I mean. Any useful information? For free? Stop clucking around, Philmar. All right, but just because of the old days. Look for me after you've talked to her. You wouldn't understand what I have to say about her before then. Don't leave unless you're thrown out, in which case, you know the drill. We don't know each other, I'll deny you in a blink. Good to see you too, old pal. We'll be back. Seems like no people have come onto the scene. The bartender. Two whiskeys, kid, and no horsing around. Pfft, I've never heard that one before. Uh, Sonny, you gotta drive, you know? Yeah, you're right, Marty. Hey, long face, give me a glass of tap water too, okay? Yes, sir, coming right up. That wasn't exactly what I meant. As I recall, you're always bragging about hiding your shotgun in your coat so well, no one can see it. Sure. Maybe I have it with me now. Yeah. What? Well, do you see that bottle, Marty? That's a 28-year-old Golden Eagle whiskey. Of all the furry gods, you're right! And hey, you just left it on the bar. Someone ordered it, got so Are drunk he forgot all about it. So, How are you doing? Were you just eating pepperoni? I'm just eating pepperonis. Do you need food? It's hard when you're on the case, Zoe. Sometimes you have to survive. I got myself a little snacky. Do you need food? I would love some food. Perhaps a macaroni and cheese? Craft? We don't have any milk. We don't have any milk? This is deeply upsetting to learn. Yeah. You know what? It's not 11 p.m. yet. I can still get a Papa John's pizza. It was yesterday. Papa John's pizza? Ugh. A pizza. Oh, I'm solving a... Oh, I'm solving a crime? Yeah. Oh, a crime hasn't really been committed other than just really vandalism at this point in the game. You know, it's not actually... It's really just somebody spraying down a village. No one's actually died or anything like that. But we're trying to sniff it out before it starts. You know what I'm saying? What? Ah, thank you. I love you. What a dame. Anyway. 
so we're confiscating it as evidence. <sighs> yeah, well, more like stealing it. But if it's easier for you... Ah, uh, you're twisted, pal. But to be honest, I've no objections. I'll take it. Gentlemen, your drinks. Yeah, uh, sorry, but we have to run. Uh, thanks anyway, Bojack. Ugh, my name is not Bojack. Ah, I tip you, pal, but I don't have any That's change, the so... Man. Sure, sir. The Tsar welcomes you back anytime. Sounds good, Bojack. Ask about uh, Natasha. Tell me, hey, Breath, have you seen Natasha tonight? Why am I being Not racist yet, to this man? But she's coming on soon. Well, can you tell me anything about Mr. Ibn Wessler? Sir, I, I don't want to. What about, let's see, five dollars maybe? But, sir, you haven't even paid for your drinks yet. Yeah, yeah, stop riding on the details, Big Nose. You do your job, and we'll do ours, okay? I mean, we're not here for work, of course. We're just here to relax. Oh, yeah, exactly. Just a little fun. Of course, gentlemen. Uh, that girl is looking at me. She's just looking at anyone whose glass is empty, Marty. That's all. Uh, no, 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 Sonny. She was staring at me, like, hard. Now, I saw it. Marty, you're imagining things. Oh, wait a second. You see that, right? She's looking right at us with those big, black, weird squirrel eyes. Okay, Marty, don't panic. And just look elsewhere and walk away slowly. Creepy little squirrel girl. That's a rabbit. That doesn't look like a squirrel to me. That's a, that's a rabbit. Uh, just one more thing, Philmar. <laughs> I see you haven't changed a bit. Do you think we're walking into a trap? You always had good instincts. You we're know, definitely walking into a I trap. I couldn't figure out this Natasha woman, even when I worked for her. Then the trouble is bigger than I thought. Just take care of yourselves, and don't leave your guns out of reach. Oh, that's never happened. Yeah, this crazy cock even sleeps with his. You're welcome to the club, Brother Bird. Take care, Phil. You too, old fart. Mm. Ah, fancy mm. whiskey. Look, uh, Sonny, I know it's not my place, but Laura's father went to that guy when his, you know, problems uh, had gone too far. You're treading on thin ice, Marty. No, I just... <laughs> Look, fellas that at is the station not are squirrel. talking, you know? All kinds of things. Moses, Plato, Bosco, and the others. Talking, eh? About what? About why Blood Boil took my badge? About what an untrustworthy alcoholic wreck I am? Look, uh, I'm sorry, it doesn't matter. Good, and let it stay that way. At least we're cracking this one together, yeah? Sure, Marty. Sure. So, There's where the hell is buck. Natasha? Well, let's ask that stud over there with those nice gals. Mm, that guy looks way too horny for my taste. Oh, man, your sense of humor is bad as ever. You just need to get used to it again. That's pretty <sighs> good. That's pretty good. That's a, that's a pretty good bit right there. Ah, this is the life, huh? What's this guy do? Real estate? Mob accountant? Or is he a movie star? He looks like Very a nice. coat hanger to me. Uh, that was actually worse than the previous And a joke. little ro low-key <laughs> racist, try. Sonny. I don't know what to say. Ah, this is the lot. He looks... Uh, <laughs> I try. The stage. I was hoping to have missed the main event. You're a rusty old cock, that's why. <laughs> so says the little butt jam. But... What? What did you call That's me? That's not even a word. <laughs> what did you it call Marty? Now. All because of you. You should feel honored. But Jam. Uh, you know, Sonny, sometimes you're like an evil little child. What is it, Butt Jam? <laughs> Nothing, old fart. 
butt jam. I'm gonna use that. A fox is a wolf who sends flowers. What? Oh, nothing. I read it somewhere. Fascinating. I didn't know you could read. Ha ha ha. Very funny. Remember that old case with the fox and the raven? How could I even forget? <sighs> Absurd, right? All that bloodshed for a piece of cheese. Yeah, hunger can bring out the monster in animals, right? And the wildest and most primordial instincts, no matter how civilized they seem. As you say, Monty. Hmm. Henchman. This guy is certainly not a gangster henchman. Of course he's not. What do you mean? It's a flopper. Hey, Monty, I bet you That's wouldn't a dare to right go up there. to him and ask if he hasn't That's a seen flopper. your fur coat. What? Why? I'm mad, yeah, but not suicidal. Ah, are you chicken or what? Piss off, old bird. Nah, chicken shit. What about that? What's that back there? This done for hire. Oh, I know this fodder guy. He was kind of good in Death of the Horse. <laughs> You've seen every cluckin' movie. You know, Laura and I go to the movies a lot. When was the last time you went? Exactly 12 years ago. Oh, you remember that precisely? Let me guess. Molly? Yep, our very first date. I see. What did you watch? I don't remember. I just remember her. And nothing else. You're a clucking poet. I mean it. But Veronica Cade and Robert Fodder. What weird titles these have. Dame with IBM. That woman or with Ibn. I think I know her from somewhere. Maybe in your dreams, pal. Hmm. Isn't that... Yes, it is. The great Ibn Wessler, in the flesh. So much for our incognito. You think he noticed us? Only if he's not entirely blind. Ah, uh, great. Just yeah, right. act nonchalant, my friend. No, it can't be. What now? Is that Olivia? No, Marty. Hey, uh, Olivia. Are you talking to me? It's oh me. Oh, my God. Marty McChicken. Oh, God. Oh, God. What a pleasant surprise. The roaster coppers in person. Chicken police. But yeah, Mr. Wessler, you could say so. The name's... Sunny Featherland, of course, of course. Chicken police. Your partner is, uh, He is, uh... Marty McChicken, sir. I, I just introduced myself to your lady companion seconds ago. Oh, yeah. I'm so happy to see you. Hello, boys. So, to what do we owe this pleasure, gentlemen? Yeah, so, um... <clears throat> We, we were, um, just in the neighborhood, and... Cut the crap, Marty. All right, we're here for your sweetheart, Natasha. Oh, I see. No big deal. Just a blackmail thing. You know, horrifying threats written on the wall with blood-red paint. The usual stuff. You must be familiar with this kind of thing. Oh, yeah, indeed. It's, a uh, nasty business. But I didn't know Natasha hired a detective because of this simple matter, but to be honest, I understand. I would have taken matters into my own hands, you see. But I'm kind of busy. Mr. Wessler had a meeting with Attorney General Hamtaro yesterday, so he's rather tired. If you would excuse us. Oh, dear Olivia, it's okay. These gentlemen are just doing their job, right? And if I've heard correctly, they're notoriously thorough. So, how can I help you? We've got a few questions, if you don't mind. I'm at your service. Hmm. All right. What, uh, what do you have to say about the Sark Club? Nice bunker you got here. Well, thank you, but it's not mine. Not anymore. But I'm sure you already know that. Listen, detective, if you want to know something, please ask straight, huh? 
All right, Mr. Wessler, let's make this a bit more professional. All right. Tell me about you. I'm not as exciting as people tend yeah, to believe. I grew up in a poor family of many siblings. I'm the only one still alive, unfortunately. My career started with a shoe store, and now, here I am. I wouldn't call that an average life. Shoe store owner to mob boss. How dare you speak to Mr. Wessler like that? Leave it, Olivia, dear. It's just provocation. I'm sorry if I offended you, Mr. Wessler. Shall we talk about something else? Hmm. Lewis. Everybody knows Mr. Hayworth. You know, Lewis. He's an antique piece of furniture in this city, so to speak. Only a bit worn out. It's not my fault that he's so much in debt, Detective. But the name of his family still rings quite loud in Clawville. Is that still worth anything? The name is just a name, of course. But the man behind the name is another matter, Mr. Featherland. You're a pragmatic rat. Thank you. What about your wife, Natasha? Look, Detective, if you want to know something, just ask. All right, Mr. Wessler. Ah, oh, looks like I'm gonna have to interrogate him for that one. Has your assistant been working for you long? Are you talking about me? Yes, I'm talking about you, ma'am. Let me answer your question, then. I've been in Mr. Wessler's employment for six months. Why do you ask? Oh, just uh, routine questioning, you know. Most of them aren't good for anything. Just killing time. It sounded rude to me. Yeah, please forgive a detective. Olivia's a real firecracker. Hmm. Hmm. Seems like we're gonna have to, uh, question you. Wessler is a tricky guy. Unfortunately, I don't know enough about him, so I have to be cunning. I can't just pin him against a wall. Yet. How did you feel when you heard about the blackmail? How did you feel when you heard about the blackmail? Honestly, I found it ridiculous. And now? Now I'm kind of interested. But I wouldn't call it blackmail yet. They're just empty threats. There were no demands. Good point. Thank you. Are we done? No, not quite. I'm sorry to hear that. Hmm. Seem like, uh, I feel like I know why you wouldn't call the police, but, uh, so I, I think that this is probably the better question. You he's seem uh, very he's busy a monster. Man. I don't think May he would I ask call the what police. You do? Eh, it's, uh, uninteresting. Would you elaborate? <sighs> I got a small share in the meat substitute business. If the new product works, eh, maybe we can make your job easier. You mean reduce predation in Clawville? There are such plans. Uh, if you're interested, talk to Olivia, my assistant. She's an expert in what she does, uh, <laughs> unlike me. Thank you. That's it for now. Mm. Oh, your alibis. This place yours. You're very tacturn, Mr. Whistler, though I hear you're quite the speaker. You're very taciturn, Mr. Whistler, though taciturn. I've heard you're quite the speaker. Look, I'll gladly talk to anyone about business, and even happier to talk about art. But uh, I'm no fan of interrogation on a night out. Are you even on duty? Sorry for any offense, Mr. Wessler. Let's talk about something else. Wessler is tougher than I thought, and he's secretive. It's time to gently beat around the bush. Hmm. Or, uh, spend a lot of your time here. Don't you find these messages dangerous? Beat around the bush, I mean, you know, I, I, I feel like, you know, that's kind of getting a little too close to it. Uh, you and Natasha close. Are you and Natasha close? What do you mean exactly, chicken? Mr. Featherland, if you please, this could be important. How does she stand on the scale from sweetheart to wife? Oh, 
You have some nerve. Ask her then. I'm a gentleman, Mr. Featherland. Really? Maybe you can't comprehend it, but I can't ask for her hand until she offers it to me herself. How chivalrous. Get to the point, detective. Ibn is quick-tempered, and I can use that to my advantage. I've confounded and softened him with my previous questions. Now it's time to be specific and ruthless. Have there been similar threats in the past? The mob boss and the pussycat, eh? How did you even meet? Would you be willing to testify at the station? Now that's a little too soft. I kind of like this one. I feel like it's pretty direct. The mob boss and the pussycat, eh? How did you even meet? Huh? Are you trying to piss me off, Corpora, so I accidentally let some big secret slip out, huh? A simple answer would work. <sighs> you know, Natasha, she's both connoisseur and muse. Uh, uh, so, uh, how was it? Uh, uh, when was it exactly? You don't remember? That's strange. Ah, yeah. The millions, of course. It was like another lifetime. It happened right here. Only this place was called the millions back then. Hm. She was a dancer. Behind the scenes, I arranged opportunities for her on the big stage. Yeah, maybe she still doesn't know it was me. Then one day, I invited her for a drink with a promise that if she was willing to meet me, I'd buy the place for her. Now I guess she was willing. The next day, she had the club in her name. Well, that is romantic. Yeah, there are many kinds of romance, Birdman. There's cheap and there's expensive. You get what you can afford. Do you live in the same house as Natasha? Do you live in the same house as Natasha? Oh, you're really something. Natasha's a free woman, but mostly, yeah, at my place in Gold Town. But she has her own kind of a weekend house. Hmm, how often does she use the weekend house? Yeah, every other weekend, roughly. I see. That's very important information. Yeah, if you say so. Hmm. So Natasha feels like she's in grave danger, yet she's still going out alone. Or is she completely alone when, the, when she's there at the weekend? So Natasha feels like she's in grave danger. This one is extremely direct. I like it. So Natasha feels like she's in grave danger, yet she's still going out alone. Yeah, I know what you're getting at, but I'm 100% sure of her loyalty. She's gone out very rarely since this started, and mostly in my company. Yeah, you know, I'm not sure if you do, but uh, in our social circles, banquets and dinners are frequent. Hmm, illegal gambling nights. <laughs> you got me there. Yeah, you're right. Natasha is crazy about the roulette wheel. Always putting it all on the red, right? Yeah, you're a real rotten bastard, Sonny. Although, yeah, always on the red. Yeah, right. So, can we meet your lady? Mm, I don't see why not. But first, please, listen to her sing. She's on soon. Focus accuracy was 40% rusted copper. Are they questioning my... Are they questioning my credentials as a detective? How dare they? What the fuck? Thank you for your time. We'll be seeing you. I have no doubt about that, unfortunately. Hey, uh, we should, uh, grab a coffee or something, Olivia. You know, for old times' sake. Don't you have a Don't wife, Marty? Hey, bye. You have oh. a wife. Please, take a seat. The show's gonna start soon. Hmm.
Sonny. Sonny. That was, um, unique. Oh, that is cute. Nobody has ever given me such a unique compliment before. Forgive me, my name is Santino Featherland. <laughs> I thought so. You look more or less like I imagined. More or less? Sometimes less is more, Mr. Featherland. Ahem. <clears throat> you were amazing, dear. As always. Could you be my little furball and fetch me a cocktail? But of course. <laughs> With all due respect, ma'am, we're not that easy to get rid of. Doesn't matter who's trying, believe me. <sighs> Doesn't is matter. Is she talking or is Marty? That's why I'm telling you. I don't I mean, want to nah. see. Wow, well, what's what? Uh, what? Well, uh, well, uh, what's there going on here? Minutes. Come alone, Sonny. You'd be too conspicuous otherwise. Hey, I understand. You know, they call him Target Marty at the station. I don't have time, Mr. Featherland. Uh, sure thing, Natasha. I'll come to your room. Three knocks, a short pause, then another three. I'll be waiting. Go, before he comes back. I knew she was a little, trouble uh, the first time I saw her. She wore danger like a perfume. It was simply part of her being, and it attracted me, like light attracts the moth people. I wanted to be the microphone as she whispers her melodies, or the pillow she rests her feet on while reading some cheap romance. I wanted to be her nightdress, barely touching, barely covering her marble skin. But I was a cop, and a lifetime wouldn't be enough to rid myself of what a woman like her hides under her makeup. Keep your distance, Sonny. It's herpes. Just keep your distance. It's, it's mainly herpes is what in this region. Listen, I had chlamydia. You know, I I I have a I have a scent for these kind of I detective cheese. They call me the ST Detective. Anyway, uh. Oh. Oh my. Oh my god. Gee, that is a, uh. unique picture. And kind of daring. I admit I've never seen anything <laughs> quite like it before. Yes, I admit it's a little daring. I keep it. It evokes good memories. A precious old friend of mine. A most wonderful artist. Hey, thank you so much, Nix, for the raid. Hope you had a great stream. Ah, uh, things are a little weird right now. I'm in a uh, full detective mode. Uh, I hope that you had a good time, though. Playing whatever you were doing twice in one day. What do you mean twice in one day? Twice in one day? Twice in one day. Hey, thank you, Nix. Appreciate you. Um, don't look at the portrait in the background. It, you don't need to see that. It's a little weird looking right now. It's a little strange. I don't know. I, the dream tweet now that, I mean, between the two, like, I really have outed myself as a fucking weirdo to you, I feel like. I don't know. I don't know what, but thank you for the red. I hope you had a great stream. Hope it was a banger. We're playing through Chicken Police. We're here in this, uh, this lady, Natasha's, uh, bedroom. She hired us for a job. A crime. Okay, well, the crime wasn't, like, anything serious. Like, like, it wasn't, like, murder or anything like that. It was more just vandalism. She's receiving threats. And we need to get to the bottom of it. So that's what we're doing. I'm, I'm putting on my... I've, I've, I'm, I'm in my detective state of, of being. And I'm drinking whiskey. 
That's what's happening tonight. Thank you. What kind of whiskey? It's a, it's a, it's a bourbon. It's a Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey. It's Woodford Reserve. It's pretty good. It's not my favorite whiskey in the world, but I felt like the color was good for the camera. You know, if we're in like black and white and everything, I didn't want to go for like, you know, like a like an Irish whiskey or whatever. You know, that that that, that would look a little weird on uh, on camera. Not as dark, um, for sure. And I, I you know, I, I love myself like a rye whiskey most of the time, but those things are alcoholic as fuck. So you know, I like I gotta gotta, gotta cut, so you know, cl calm down a little bit. I gotta slow slow down a, a little on myself. Hey, thank you, thank you though, Nix. All right, guys. All right, I'm gonna let Natasha talk now. He's got an eye, that's for sure, considering his model. Was that supposed to be some kind of compliment? I don't know. I don't compliment often. Not on purpose, anyway. Oh, you're funny. This woman's aware of her charm, and she knows how to use it. A rare and dangerous combination. A femme fatale, I guess. In the, uh... You know, talking about the old... Wow, I just stole a book off the floor. She, she has one of my stories, though. A chicken police story. Nice. A fan. I'll be, I'd be happy to sign that for you, Natasha. You I'd be, I'd be happy to help. I'm staring into the mirror. Do you even recognize yourself? Maybe you were trying to be rude, but, you know, that's a very good question. I was just trying to be rude. Oh, really? Well, then I'm sorry. Don't mention it. So this is where the magic happens, right? The big transformation. Every woman needs a little magic, and every man needs some illusion you're right there angel what are you guys i mean i you can you know i don't i don't know this feels like a little misogynistic you know aren't we aren't we better than than this you know i, I don't i don't I, this is something about the way that they're talking i know this is like the 1960s or whatever but you know like i feel like we should be better than that you know it's like it's fine. If you want to wear makeup, everybody should. Every, if you want to wear makeup, put on some makeup, you know? If you want to look good. I mean, guy liner is a thing, and it's a beautiful thing. I gotta say, guy liner really adds a lot. So it's just, a, frankly, a little offensive to say that, you know, every woman needs a little magic, and, you know, every man needs a little illusion. I, anyway, anyway so this is going back the to the mirror. And yeah, right. it's, Back to, this back to being a detective, I guess. And she knows how. Oh, I think I did that already. All right, how let's talk, like Natasha. Problem, Mr. Featherland. In a glass. But thanks, I had a couple before I came. I feel like this may be a long night. I hope it doesn't bother you if I have one myself. I get offended if women don't drink in my company. Oh, you are a funny guy. So I've been told. Anyway, uh, lovely room yes look mr featherland it's sunny saves us a lot of time okay sunny so why am i here you know men tend to babble in my presence it must be exhausting it is but you're not the type to beat around the bush is it too banal if i tell you it's an occupational hazard Terribly. So can I start the unpleasant questions? I've asked you here so you can do what you do best. Really? I thought you asked because you wanted me to investigate for you. But if you'd rather be drinking... Oh, you do have a sense of humor. How reassuring. Only if I'm a bit hungover. That's usually quite common. Oh, please drop the act about being the alcoholic, heartbroken ex-cop, Sonny. It would undoubtedly suit you, but um, I've seen you scanning my room. From the second you set foot in here, you started working, and everything I say gets sorted in your brain. Am I right? 
That's a bit of an exaggeration, but yeah, it's something like that. Well then, Sonny, come at me. Oh, that's something I don't hear often. With pleasure. We should duck. Seriously, how did you find me? Not even my boss knows where I live. Although I didn't include Ibn in my little private mission, some of his resources were still available to me. Yeah, let me guess. There's someone at the station working for him. Someone? You're so cute when you're playing naive. Have you ever had dealings with mm. the police? Probably the top city. dog. And otherwise, knowing the corruption that does goes it deep really here. Does matter, Mr. Featherland? Maybe it does. More than a little. I'm afraid you'll have to unravel that thread yourself. But you will find nothing but a dead end. All right, Natasha. Natasha is a confident woman. I can exploit that. But I must be careful. Every part of her oozes danger. Uh, that was a remarkable performance. That was a remarkable performance. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Do you perform here frequently? You're also the owner, if I'm not mistaken. Sadly, I don't have the time. But the stage still calls my name. And I perform just a few times a year. And always with a new song. So that was all the excitement. I have many admirers, if that's what you mean. Yes. Ah, uh, the picture on the wall is quite daring. The picture on the wall is quite daring. Only if you knew how old I was at the time. I think I'm on a slippery slope here. I don't know if we Come should have on. this conversation. Don't be shy. Ask me. All right. How old were you? <laughs> Did you really believe I'd tell you? You're quite a player, aren't you? Life is anything but a game, detective. Well, you tell me. Do you think one of your admirers might be behind the threats? Or what can you tell me about Ibn Wessler? I feel like I need some more information on Ibn. But I should probably just talk directly about the threats. I think I'm gonna talk directly about the threats. Do you think that one of your admirers might be behind the threats? Do you think one of your admirers might be behind the threats? Those who admire me usually idolize me. No, I don't think it's one of them. You know, the soul of an animal is extremely complicated. Sometimes all it takes is a bad look or some small rejection to turn admiration into hate. That's a stillborn theory. No one hates me if they once loved me, Mr. Detective. Ah, I see. We could ask about Deborah. That might be a good place to start. Do you have any material evidence concerning the threats? It wouldn't hurt to actually see what the threats are saying, you know? Or I could just be direct with her about it. I think I'm gonna ask for material evidence. It wouldn't hurt to actually get the threats in writing, I feel. Do you have any material evidence concerning the threats? You may think I'm irresponsible, but I didn't keep any of it. I simply couldn't bear to look at them. Didn't you think maybe the police would need it? I didn't think I needed the police. Moreover, do you think the girlfriend of Ibn Wessler could ever turn to the cops? I see. So, what about me? How do I come into the picture? It sounds ridiculous, but you're my last hope. That does sound ridiculous, but I accept my ego and uh, old habits. You can't do anything else, can you? Something like that. A leopard can't change its spots. Deep behind the diamond skin 
lies the truth. It doesn't matter how hard Natasha's trying to hide it. She's scared. Now I must concentrate to finally find out what I want to know. What was in those threats exactly? What was in those threats exactly? The message itself is not a threat. It's just a word. But a word again and again is threatening. Exactly. So? You really don't have any idea? Which word could be used for a woman like me? I guess I do. Yes. I think I know what it could be. Whore. <clears throat> Cat got your tongue? Am I right? You heard it. I said what you were thinking. And yes, that was in the message. That was printed on the paper and painted on my wall. In giant red letters. Well, thank you for your honesty. I could suggest that she lies low. Now what about Felmar? Is he here because of you? Could the threats have anything to do with the dangerous relationship between you? Or no one's ever seen the culprit, not even a shadow? If I'm trying to use her fear, I feel like this would be the next response, you know? Kind of hit home that she really has no clue what the, what's actually happening here, but if I would like to... I could ask about the relationship. I don't think that aspect scares her, though. She might let something slip if I try and play into the just the mystery uh the mystery of it all i'm gonna no go no one's for ever seen the culprit not even a shadow that's one of the most curious things even has men everywhere literally my shadows ghosts in every alley but no one saw anything one of them could be the culprit Ibn pays his animals well, and he's the most dangerous man in the city. A combination that nullifies your theory, I believe. Here is your... Is this, uh, is it... Is it pizza time? Is it detective... Is it detective pizza time? Oh my god, with... With the, with the, with the, with the delicious spinach on it, too. I mean, this is incredible. This is... Just so good. Did you hear Leo barking earlier? No, it's because the pizza guy. Oh, the pizza guy. Well, now we know he'll defend the house. <laughs> ah, Leo is barking at the pizza man. Will he defend the house? Do you think he would have eaten that pizza man? I think he got excited, but like he was not happy that somebody was up right away. That's fair. Maybe Leo is a little bit of a, a protective little lad. You good? I appreciate this. Thank you. I love you. Love you. Pizza for pizza. Detective pizza. This is good. This is good stuff. Maybe, ma'am. Love is capable of insane miracles and miraculous insanity. What poetry. Did you ever think about writing a book? Never. I'm afraid I'd learn too much about myself. Maybe that's the point. I would read about you. Not like the chicken police bulb fiction. Furry hell. Do you read that trash? Like everyone else in the city. Oh, great. I think it's flattering. Even as badly written tales of heroes in the gutter. You enjoy it? Well, just a little, Sonny. Just a little. A dark shadow from the so not a fan and not an inside job. Who do you ex who do you suspect? So it's not a fan and not an inside job. Who do you suspect? Aren't you supposed to know that? Usually, yes. But I've got nothing to go on. And you don't have a hunch. Maybe I do. But first, I want to know if you'll even accept my case. I'm here, aren't I? 
that's true, but I must know if I can trust you. The proof of the pudding is in the eating. I wish it was that simple. Natasha is a mysterious woman, but I must gouge out at least one of her secrets. Enough games. It's time to know why I'm here. Hmm. Let's stop beating around the bush. Let's How do you know my wife? The bush. How do you know Molly? I'm prepared for that question, but it's... Still not easy. How do you, you know my well wife? That if you threw in the name of my wife, I'd come to you, no matter how vague and suspicious the case was. I just want to know if you're simply a manipulator, or you're really that desperate. I really know her. I'm not lying. Oh, really? How? Were you a nurse, too? Forgive me, but I don't think so. Don't be rude and so cynical, Sonny. I'm sorry, but that's me when feline claws are at my throat. Molly is an old and good friend of mine. She has nothing to do with this, but I knew that if I didn't mention it to you, you wouldn't have come. Yeah, Natasha, you're right there. I knew you were a decent fowl, that you would help me. That's what you're famous for. Don't go there. Flattery doesn't work. Look, forgive me. I shouldn't have brought your wife into this. You're right, you shouldn't have. But to be honest, I don't think she's my wife anymore. On paper she is, but I haven't seen her in years. I'm sorry, I didn't know. Really? <sighs> I, I did. I knew I checked you out before I sent Deborah. Luck me. This case is getting more and more intriguing. What exactly do you want from me? You played me from the start, didn't you? You played me from the start, didn't you? It wasn't my intention. I'm an old cock, Natasha. I've played too many of these games, and I've been on the losing side often enough. I'm an old what? You're going to walk away? You're damn right. I don't know if it's worth it for me. Look, Sonny, money's not an issue. Oh, yeah, your fawn had already mentioned that. But unfortunately, it'll be hard to spend all that dough when I'm dead. Dead? Don't even say that. Do you have a gun? Me? Of course you, Natasha. Do you have it on you? Not at the moment. Well, let me give you some advice. Keep it with you, always. Maybe in your purse. You, you don't think they, whoever they are, would hurt me? Why can't don't I play as Luigi? Natasha. You're right. I'll keep it with me. I don't want to scare you, but two cops snooping around can mess something like this up. Even if it's just two roosters. You'll keep snooping? Thank you, Sonny. Maybe you're getting yourself into even deeper trouble with me. Thank me when this is all over. That was my questioning. Focus 90%, right? Game came around on me. Said that I'm a true detective. The game did what to me? What did I just say? What did I just say the game did to me? Anyway. Uh, the threat, or rather, the threatening word in the messages sent to Nastash Natasha is simply whore. It's brief. It says a lot. Regardless. I needed to know what the actual threat said. So it's interesting. It's somebody who clearly has an opinion on Natasha. We can, we can use that. We can use that. That's a clue to figure out who it is. Just one more thing, Sonny. Natasha. Please narrow down come the suspects. to 37 Rochester Street in Flower Town tonight. I'd like to show you something that could be of a great help in your investigation. I was afraid this was coming. Why there? Why not here and now? It's something I keep hidden there. I won't take the risk of Ibn or one of his men seeing it. Isn't Ibn too dangerous to keep secrets from? Sonny, a woman is naked without her secrets. Mm. I knew you would 
understand? Oh, yeah. I understand everything. So, when do we meet? The night is almost over. I'll be there in an hour. Don't be early, and don't be too late. Look, Natasha, you know... Please, this is very important to me. Sure, I get it. I'll be there. Thank you. Until later, Natasha. Goodbye, Sonny. Why did you name it the Czar Club when you took over? It was the millions before. Maybe you can guess my origins from my name and my accent. I come from the Eastern Tsardom of Slavonia. We are quite respectful of our leaders. Do you feel that's not the case here in Clawville? Here? No. Absolutely not, Mr. Featherland. Many here don't even know the name of their king. To them, he's only the Fox King. It's quite disrespectful and rude. There's some truth to that. Where I'm from, we choose our leaders ourselves. And whatever they do later, we proudly stand by our decision. So that's why the name, in respect to your country. <sighs> Don't take me for so sentimental. It's only partly the reason. We lived there until I was 14. Then we, we had to flee. It doesn't matter why. In the end, I was the only one who made it to Clawville. So the name isn't because of nostalgia or respect. More like a reminder. So, Debra. why Debra? I could not seek you out in person. It was risky even to send Debbie. It's too late now. Mr. Wessler is aware of my little investigation. I'm sorry I got her mixed up in this. She's a lovely girl. She looked like one. Hmm. May I Bob be was. brash? It's New Year's Eve. Everything goes tonight. Ibn, do you love him? In my own way? Yes, I do. Whatever that means. You can't understand this, Sonny. There are women who can't actually love. Not like they're supposed to. But that doesn't mean they don't love however they can. That's not a real answer, is it? <laughs> if you only accept yes or no, then yes, I love him. In your own way. So this message... I'm sorry I had to upset you, Sonny. But if I didn't take that step, would we be talking here right now? Well, probably I'd be dead drunk and counting sheep men in my dreams. I'm good for you, you see? <laughs> You're a real angel. Marty McChicken. Why just me? What's wrong with my partner? Nothing in the world. I just like to be discreet. I wanted to talk to you in private because of uh, Molly. Uh, well, uh, thank you for your discretion. It, uh, it means a lot. Don't mention it. So, who's this Olivia bird? I know well what you're curious about. You want to know if she's sleeping with Ibn. The thought may have crossed my mind you men but guess what maybe she does you don't care as long as he loves me i don't well that's your business what do you know about her she's not the one threatening me you can be sure of that i know that was your next thought the lovesick assistant is jealous of the boss's girlfriend and wants to flick her out of the picture it would even stand up, but Olivia doesn't have feelings. If she let Ibn sleep with her, it's because she does what he says, nothing more. That was so honest and raw, I'm inclined to believe it. Wow. Do you have a light, Natasha? I'm sorry, I've never smoked. Really? That's very uncommon in your line of work. 
it was uncommon in all my previous lines of work, too. But I promise the next time we meet, I'll bring you a box of matches. Here in an hour, right? <laughs> I might take you up on that. <laughs> no trouble at all. I have one last cigarette. A box of matches might be a little bit excessive for that, but uh, thank you for offering. Do you have a light? I'm ready. <laughs> All right, Natasha. I think I've learned everything. This I can. woman's aware of her charm. I think I should leave now. Well, weren't you supposed to be waiting in the car? I was bored to tears, Sonny. I also thought maybe something happened to you. You thought Natasha had eaten me alive, huh? Well, who knows? You're such a fragile little thing. <laughs> I'm too old for this, Marty. Then next time, leave the dangerous predators to me. I didn't mean that, Marty. I meant you. Oh. Well. Ah, this is the life, huh? What's this guy do? Real estate? Mob accountant? Or is he a movie star? He looks like a coat hanger to me. Uh, that was actually worse than the previous joke. Heh, <laughs> I try. Remember that other case? Oh, it uh, too, Miss. What happened? You're, you know, it is. All right. Well, I, uh, think I'm done here. Oh, looks like Ibn isn't here anymore. Excuse me, pal. My name is Santino Featherland. Eh? Gabriel, what do you want, chickens? Do you happen to know where Mr. Wessler went? Do you take me for a fool? Get out of here while I'm in a good mood, birds. Okay. Thanks, big boy. A flopper. Listen, pal, uh, maybe if, uh... Did I stutter, chicken? Get lost. All right, Gabriel. Calm down. Oh, it's you. How can I help you, gentlemen? Look, we really don't want to dig into your personal life, but... But what exactly is my relationship with Mr. Wessler? And how close hmm. am I to him? You don't beat around the bush, ma'am. Well, actually, I remember. I don't have time to chit-chat, Mr. Featherland. So yes, I'm not one to beat around the bush. And no, I'm not sleeping with Mr. Wesley. <laughs> well, thanks for the uh, quick and straight answer. Anything else? Hmm. Yeah, we might as well Wesley's ask you a secretary, few Olivia Blackwig. You think she knows anything useful? It's worth a try, Marty, but let me do the talking. She's not very fond of you. Yeah, what can I say? You know, back in the day, I flew from tree to tree. I was a free bird. Maybe I was playing her a bit. Jesus, Marty. Look, uh, Olivia, you know, last time... Please, Marty, there's no need. Yes, there is. I know I wasn't a gentleman, and I know I should have called you, but I was young and... You don't have to explain. I wasn't waiting long for your call. I forgot about it fast. That's, well, good to hear, I suppose. I'm sorry we disturbed you. Not at all. Have a nice evening, gentlemen. Do you come here often, Olivia? No, not really. Well, okay. Thanks. You're welcome. You know, Ibn's not as ferocious as you'd think. On the contrary, he's become very different recently. I heard. Don't you find that weird? A sudden change of heart? Sometimes an animal just has enough. Fed up and wants a change. I deeply respect that. Well, thank you for your honesty, ma'am. What's your relationship with Miss Natasha Katsenko? We've talked a bit, that's all. There's no uh, tension between you? You know, the pretty secretary. Well, thank you for your compliment, Mr. Featherland. No, 
No tension. Natasha's an intelligent woman. I respect her. Is that mutual? That I can't tell. If I'm not mistaken, Natasha has a weekend house in Flowerville. Yeah, that's right. Can you tell me anything about it? I've never been there. Allegedly, it's beautiful. Elegant and luxurious. Just like Natasha herself. So, have you talked to Natasha? In fact, yes. She was, uh, kind of mysterious. Good night, Remy. I bet Remy. she was. Have a good sleep. You know, I've never abandoned a case before. Not voluntarily, anyway. But that woman... You're, uh, too old for this shit, huh? <laughs> As you say, pal. That's exactly how I felt, too. Before you leave, take this and examine it closely. What is it? The reason I've decided all of this is not worth it for me. Wow, that sounds encouraging. Take care of yourselves, guys. This case, maybe it goes deeper than you'd think. Oh, that makes my feathers stand on end. Ah, old croakers. You're safe while I'm here. Okay, okay, I didn't say anything. The truth is, Ibn's a dirty bastard, but he's likable. It must be his charisma that snared Natasha. Maybe there's more to it than simple wild love. Hmm, who knows? Animals commit the dirtiest of deeds for wild love. Hmm, you've got a point. How dirty are we talking? Wonderful girl. Either I'm gonna kill her or I'm beginning to like her. That's funny, I swear I've heard that before. Huh, to be honest, me too. Either I'm gonna kill her. So, Natasha invited us to her weekend house. That's either very good news or very bad news. 50%, that's not that bad, is it? That's an admirable attitude. Attitude, yeah, he's got that. Most of the time, I think that's all he's got. Hey! Who is this woman anyway? She's like Ibn's shadow. Nobody knows anything about her. I don't know if she has anything to do with the case, but it's worth keeping an eye on her anyway. Mm, more women, more trouble. You already fantasizing. <sighs> Even the sight of young women make me tired. Anyway, most people say she's the rat's lover too. But next to Natasha, I doubt he'd want her. Anyway... Pussycat would have already torn her to shreds. Could be. All right, Philmar. Good talking to you, friend. Hey, Big Nose. Where did Mr. Wessler go? Unfortunately, I don't know, Big Faith. But I wouldn't tell you even if I did. Really? Say, did anyone ever tell you that you're an irritating piece of sh... <clears throat> uh, anything else, dear sirs? Creepy little squirrel girl. Ah, this is... He looks like... Uh, <laughs> I Nothing to do with that. Who are you? Uh, I guess I can look at a few new things that I've Come got. Come to daddy, darling. Come to daddy, golden eagle. Hmm. This. We stepped into it, didn't we? This is our list. We stepped in. Of all that's furry, what kind of a list is this? Exactly. I have no idea, but I don't even want to find out. Those names, all top dogs. Maybe they play cards together. Sure, that's very likely. Anyway, I pried this list out of a dead man's hand. Somebody dropped him outside the forest, a few miles from the Wessler residence. I should have known she was keeping secrets. Feels like secrets. a bigger crime than keeping maybe we secrets. should be solving She's instead of herself. the threats. Thanks, Philmar. This could be important. Uh, don't thank me. Maybe I've just signed your death warrant. Oh, thank you, sir. 
Aw, oh, shut up, Marty. Calling Boo's darling, it's kind of weird, don't you think? Says someone who calls his gun collection his harem. Touche. I'll shut it. Good birdie. Well, we, before we go ahead and travel to our next location, I feel like we've got a lot of new clues that we can look at here. Good old Filmar must know something about Natasha that could be important to the case, but he won't talk until I meet her. He seems a bit nervous. Must be something really significant. I think that ended up turning into the list after we talked to him, he handed it to us and everything. Natasha has invited me to her weekend house to show me something. In any other situation, I would be glad about it, but in this case, I'm worried. The threat, or rather the threatening word on the messages sent to Natasha is simply whore. It's brief, but it says a lot regardless. I think, I do think it, it, it narrows it down quite a bit. We get a get an insight into their motivation. Just just the the tiniest insight into their motivation through that. I only recognize a few name names on the list Filmar shoved into my hand, but all of them belong to the respected elite of Clawville. It could be a wedding roster, but I doubt that's the case. Interesting. Looks like we had some clues we missed. I've been trying very hard to change the subject when it comes to the threats. He obviously knows more than he's willing to tell. Natasha is afraid, and her fear is genuine, but she isn't telling me everything regardless, and I don't like it. She has remarkably green eyes, and, she definitely, and she's definitely in trouble. So am I. Natasha is a mysterious woman indeed, and seems dangerous too, but she's undoubtedly in, in serious trouble. The question is, is she the source of the problem, or is it someone else? She came from the northern Sardom of Sw uh, Stowonia? Stowonia? Stowonia. From where her family had to flee. Later, when Natasha reached the city of Claville, she was already an orphan. The list with all those imposing names must have something to do with Natasha, and thus with the threats too. Interesting. One of the key people in this case, for sure. Alright, Philmar. An absolutely average, forgettable guy, and my old acquaintance from Maveria. Filmar, the, names he go the name he goes ne by nowadays, is an old comrade from before the Clawville times. He's one of the best private eyes in the city, and just like most of them, he gets into trouble with the law pretty often. Yet he's one of the very few people who can still be trusted in Clawville. It seems Filmar also used to work for Natasha, but he, got, uh, uh, but he got out of the case before the ground got too hot. Anyway, he kept a piece of evidence, as any good P.I. would do, which could be very useful to us. Gotta thank Filmar for that. Good looking, charismatic, and a clucking gangster. Ibn's currently busy with some kind of meat substitute business. That's what he and his assistant told us, anyway. Ibn was acting quite strange, and he hesitated when I mentioned how he met Natasha. It would be interesting to hear the story from another point of view. After the show, Ibn left the SAR club suspiciously fast. Unusually tall and slim for a crow, she's quiet and mysterious. Olivia is currently Ibn Wessler's assistant and escort, finding out whether there's anything other than a working relationship between Miss Crow and Mr. Rat could prove valuable. According to Natasha, Olivia is perfectly devoid of emotion, which precludes her from standing behind the threats. Does not mean she's not Ibn's lover. Marty dated Olivia for a short period of time. That's it. I don't want to know more about this. Gabriel. Quiet and deadly. He's most likely from Stowonia. This bobcat is most likely Ibn Wessler's goon. Interesting. The weekend house. 
Natasha Kazinko's weekend house. It stands in the cleanest and most separated quarter of the city in Flowerville. I'm curious what she's hiding there. Something in the codex. Stuonia. It's the bleak world of the proud Stuonians, mostly inhabited by predators and big cats. The political situation between Clawville and Stuonia is quite tense and delicate for both historical and commercial reasons. The Stuonian Sardom was the biggest loser of the Meat War, but most animals have been considering them the potential trigger of the Second Meat War and the biggest threat looming over the modern world. Hector III, or as most animals call him, the Fox King, is the third member of the Phalex dynasty. Although Clawville is a small state, its king is amongst the most influential animals of the wilderness. Not because of the city's actual importance, but for the riches of its faraway colonies. Well, very interesting. Seems like we're good to go to the next location now, though. The Weekend House. Well, if there's one thing I'd learned during 20 years of detective work, it's that if someone wants to meet you at a remote location at night, you should bring an army for backup. One time, me and Marty were stupid enough to underestimate a situation like that, and we never really recovered. And yet, here we were again, about to step alone into something hauntingly familiar. Only one tactic remained, as the old dogs say. Balls to the wall. Ugh, this place gives me the creeps. I wouldn't say I like it either. Let's take a look around before we go inside. Textbook. I'm telling you, it's a trap. Shut up, Marty. The word. So, this is the word. What can I say? The message is loud and clear. Yeah, what matters is who is it for and what does it mean? I can't misunderstand that if I wanted to. We'll see. Wait a second, did that bimbo put a spell on you? As you used to say, don't let it cloud your objective judgment, boss bird. Watch who you're talking to, boy. Do we have to use the word bimbo either? You wrote that down? It burned into my mind. Damn. It's not a good sign. Maybe she just lost it when she hurried into the house. Yeah, right. Do you think it belongs to Natasha? No idea. Do you think I measured her feet when I was in her room? Not sure I want to know, but I wouldn't be surprised. Should we take it? Hell no. I'll buy you one if you want. This is police business. Do you mean the real cops? Do you think? I'm almost certain. My crest is tingling. Damn it. Well, thank God I have a weapon on me, or two. When do you not have one? Fair point. Stop staring at it. You're freaking me out. Okay, okay. I just like shoes. Furry hell, Marty. I don't want to know. Kind of a foot guy, aren't you, Marty? Chicken police. Hands up. Marty, that's enough. Chicken police. Marty, that... A shotgun in there. There's definitely something happening here. Marty, before we enter, did you bring Big Bertha? Of course. She's in the trunk. It's time to get Her Majesty out. That's what I like to hear. Let's go. Hello, my beauty. Just don't point it at me. Aw, scared? Take it easy. I swore I'm not gonna shoot you again. Very gallant of you, partner. Why, are you still pissed at me? I'm happy to remind you why you got shot the first time. I get it. Just shut the fuck up already. I thought that we said cluck here. It's the nothing. Uh, what was that? Eh, forget it. Just an old quote from a movie. It means it's fucking dark in here. <sighs> Flashlight. I didn't bring one. Uh, me neither. What a pair of fucking professionals. Yep. 
But you do have a shotgun with you. We should have shotguns for this kind of deal. Is that from an old movie? No, it's an original. Figures. Debra. They... They killed Debra. She was lying on the floor as if she was sleeping. She looked peaceful, almost. The large pool of blood ruined the picture. Poor, delicate Deborah. Maybe you were too pure and innocent for this city, but in the end, its filth pulled you under. You know, no animal can swim in high heels. Wild gods. Fuck, even. Yeah, it's her. Deborah, the girl who came to my office. I figured, but what the hell happened? Was it Natasha? Is this what you wanted us to see? No. I mean, I don't think so, Marty. She seemed very attached to the girl, and I believed her. Furthermore, she has no motive to kill her. Natasha meant some object. Something maybe the killer wanted, too. And the poor girl was trying to protect it. Did she seem that kind of girl? She risked a lot simply by coming to see me. She would have done it for her mistress. Why is she naked? Was it sexual? I mean, there's no sign of struggle. She seems untouched. Maybe she knew her assailant. Was it a lover? This looks premeditated. So far, the messages have appeared in weird places, but this, this is a new level. It's no longer just about empty threats. Well, maybe Natasha's on her way here right now. Or she was already here and something happened to her too. Kidnapped or worse. Those are possibilities, but we can't wait. We don't have time for guessing. Search the house, search everything. The room's not trash. Whoever did this wasn't looking for the same thing we are. Or they knew exactly where to find it. Wait, what are we looking for exactly? I have no idea, but it's something important. Things like that have a way of getting noticed when you come across them. Amen to that. Jesus Christ. The message. Here too. Yes, but this isn't about Deborah and wasn't meant for her. It was meant for Natasha. Obviously. What have we gotten ourselves into, Sonny? I don't know, Marty, but let's get ourselves out of it as soon as possible. I really shouldn't be here, you know? It's New Year's Eve. I should be out partying, not dealing with this shit. Well, it's a little late for that. I told you it was gonna be a rough ride. What you told me was it's gonna take a few hours and it's practically nothing. <laughs> and you believe me. Yeah, I was an idiot. There you go. Poor girl. How old was she? 20, 25? Yeah, something like that. What are we gonna do about her? Nothing. We can call the police. Anonymously, of course. Poor thing. Jesus Christ. It's an exceptionally beautiful piece. What does it depict, I wonder? I have no idea, Sonny. It's so art, I'm scared to have an opinion. Nice. Yeah, it really is. I mean, it's all right. I, I wouldn't exactly say nice like that, especially with the dead body right nearby. I feel like it's just it doesn't really match the vibe, you know, like we we're getting the like detective. I'm like, somebody's died at this point in the game. So like, you know, I don't know. Nice. Yeah, there you go. It, it really, really is. is. It really is. It's a nice painting. I guess maybe art, art, art should be appreciated. Also, is that the Game Awards? That's the Game Awards uh, right there. I'm pretty sure. That is a uh, Game Awards trophy. All right. At the Game Awards. This... What is this exactly? A human. Mythical creature. 
quite the cult in Iveria. The whole country is full of these statues. Does it mean anything? They say humans are the keepers of secrets and the messengers of chaos and destruction. You don't think... Let's take a closer look. Molly loved things like this. How about this one here goes missing and, uh... Don't even finish that sentence, Marty. Molly loved... How about... Don't eat... Hmm, damn. Just like in the adventure books. Rich animals are all insane. You have a point. Oh, you can't be serious. <laughs> Is this some kind of... Yeah, it's a riddle, Marty. But it doesn't make any sense. Why use something as simple as this when a four-digit number is almost impossible? An idle whim, or the riddle has a meaning. Maybe. Four animals into four places. What does it represent? Think, Marty. Where did we see four animals holding something in their hands? What are we talking about now? Deborah is dead, and the word whore is written on her back, too. We found Deborah's body in Natasha Katzinko's weekend house, naked with a message on her back. Don't like it one bit. Seeing Deborah shocked Marty quite a bit. I could understand why. I knew it's not going to be a routine case, but I didn't want to drag this feather duster into anything like this. A human is a mythical creature appearing in many stories and legends. Usually, it appears as a wise creature, a keeper of secrets. But it also has a dual nature because of chaos and destruction follow in its wake. According to most, the essence of its symbolism lies in the fact that certain secrets require a substantial price to be paid. By uncovering these secrets, we, secrets, we bring a curse upon ourselves. Some believe humans are the messengers of Navagatiti, the goddess of nothingness, and usually depict them as angels with wings. Humans of all people. Family photo. This must be Natasha's family. Hmm, wealthy. Do you think she's from the Stavonian Tsar's family? Oh, nobody could have survived that massacre. But I'm sure this family was also close to the fire. What is Guess she and doing destruction here anyway? certainly does describe what, chat, alias? doesn't it? Keeping secrets, and now this case? Do you think it's all connected somehow? Let's not draw hasty conclusions, Marty. Look at those clothes. Could it be a military family? Maybe. Perhaps. Or Stavonian fashion. Your intuition always astounds me, Marty. What would I do without you? And there you go. There you go. All right, Marty. Should we exit now? I mean, it said something about a rich, uh, riddle, and where have we seen four... Uh, you know, four things looking at something or whatever. I can't remember. Oh, right here. Is it this? Molly. My ex-wife. We stepped into it, didn't we? Ironic, but ever since I've been on furlough, with only my fake badge sitting in my cabinet, I feel more like a cop than I ever had before. More like a Clawville cop, anyway. Interesting. Oh man, I I haven't dusted you off. I feel like I'm missing something. You wrote that down? It burned into my poor thing. I don't know if there's much more to do with this. Nice. Yeah. It really is. We can't take it with us, but remember what you've seen. Yes, sir, boss bird, sir. All 
Looks like her father is a member of the military. I don't know if there's anything else we can really do here. Ah, empty fireplace. There you go. Maybe it has something to do with this. A bird, and then a... Uh... What is that? Molly. Something and then a rhinoceros, and then a lady. Where have we seen four animals holding objects? I feel like it has something to do with this thing right here. But I don't know what these are. Is there even a rhinoceros on the thing? There isn't even a rhinoceros in it. So clearly that's not it. Maybe there's something else. We should call the department. Anonymously, of course. Do you still remember the number? I haven't called my own workplace in years. Cretan. Of course I remember. 555-111. Is it? Since when? Since they invented the telephone. <laughs> yeah, of course. No, I knew that. I was just testing you. Yeah, right. This feels like somewhere where I should probably do whatever this is first, right? And then I should do that. He said, where have we seen four animals holding, holding objects before? I could try to brute force my way through it, but nah, I don't know if that's a good idea. Does anybody have an, any ideas in chat? Maybe I should call the department now, I don't know. to daddy. I would think it had something to do with this. Wasn't there a, um... Wasn't there a picture or something that I looked at? Squirrel holding a nut today. 
I don't know if that helps. What are the chances I just get it right? Like a genius would. Like an absolute genius. What if I just go one, two, like that? Okay. I was curious if I did one, two, three, four, just like that, if it worked. We love lurking. We love lurking. Seems like there's a wolf. Bird. I don't know. Check Deborah's purse. Oh, was there a purse? I didn't even really notice. Deborah doesn't have a purse. Deborah is dead. Poor thing. We stepped into it, didn't we? I don't know if Deborah has a purse. Stop yeah, something to do with the it. shoe. Okay, okay. Furry hell, Marty. I don't want to. You wrote that down? It burned into my. No, don't tell me yet. If you have a hint as to what the solution what leads to the solution. Because I don't know if I'm supposed to, uh, what's it called? You're supposed to do it now, I will say. Okay. So what nice. hint would I have? Is it anything to do with this photo? What are you trying? What are you trying to tell me? What are you trying to tell me, Natasha? I feel like it would have something to do with this photo, maybe. What are you trying to tell me, Natasha? But these are all just cats. I don't really have anything to do with any other types of animals. Nah, don't tell me straight up. Don't worry about that. But it has something to do with something else. So what am I looking for here? Is there anything near the phone? Nothing near the phone. Is it the painting? Nice. Yeah. The hint was at a different location. I'm trying to think of everything that I saw. I remember seeing like four different animals on the sheet. Like with the SAR club. Come to daddy. Dog. Molly, my ex-wife. Hmm. So I just need to remember what I saw. Why do I feel I feel like I I've seen this star the stork? That 
feels correct to me. Do I remember any decor? I kind of do. I remember the painting. I remember the painting of herself. Um... Fuck. Um... I'm just gonna look at these and see if it rings any bells for me. I mean, this looks like Phil... Philbur, or whatever his name was. So it had something to do with the decor of the last location that we went to. Filber, a wolf? at the codex. Maybe it has something to do with like the continents and like that sort of thing. Like the kingdoms. Like birds. Cats. The fox king. I mean this that and then humans. Not at Natasha's, at an even earlier place. An even earlier place than Natasha's. There's something by the body? I mean, it's just a fireplace, it looks like. Oh! Anything interesting in there? Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah I didn't I think see there that. there is. What do we have? A new item. S.N. Could be the initials of a person, a, a place, a company, or a club. Too many possibilities, but we must find out where it's from. S.N. Could be the initials of a person, a... a S.N. Person, a place, a company, or a club. SN, SN. Is there anything that fits that? SN. Places. Up oh, dog, no. SN. Marauder. Stuonia? We won't help here. Maybe like one of... I feel like... Okay, at the end of the day, it's going to be one of like each different type of animal, right? The only problem is I don't even know what fucking slots those go in. Oh, uh, let's get a cat. Isn't there another cat? There's another cat. Okay, let's try the... Hey, thank you for the raid. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, I feel like the sheep has to be in one of them. Maybe it's the sheep and all, because the sheep is like the kind of the outlier. Mm -hmm. 
Fuck me, man. Um, fuck. It, so it, it's, it doesn't have anything to do with anything in this area. I don't know. Birds. could this be? Maybe a piece of a painting. And there's some kind of squiggle on it. The signature of the painter? Yeah, I can't make it out. What? 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 Whoa, 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 what are the chances of that happening? There's a place you can go see the answer. Where was the answer? What did? What? What was the real answer? <laughs> I don't know what to say. I feel like that. It really genuine. I may be the luckiest person alive. I might be it. Do you remember that one time? that we were playing Majora's Mask and there was that hard puzzle with the Zora puzzle and I did it on the first fucking try. It's the Clawville coat of arms in the police station. Is that actually the way that, the, that it's, it's laid out? In the Clawville police station? That's fucking ridiculous. That's insane that I got that. It's insane that that was a thing actually. What the fuck? I'm actually amazed. Wait. Wait, what did they say? Was that not it? What did I say? It was these two, I think. And then I think... This one was the lion. And I think this one I landed on the fox. Wait, did I already open it? Is it in my inventory now? Oh, it's in my inventory. I mean, it's in my inventory now. Yeah. It's a piece of a painting. Judging by how well it was hidden, I'm sure this is what Natasha wanted to show us. Interesting. So a piece of a painting? That's it? And what's that smear on it? That's fucking insane. It's too illegible to be a signature. It could be anything. Maybe Natasha can help us. After all, this is what she wanted to show us, isn't it? Well, that's if we find her. She should be here by now. True. Well, then what's next? How about we peck around town some more? We could do that, but I think we should gather what we know and try to figure out where we can go from here. A uh, bourbon in my office? Ah, uh, you know what? After all this, I could use a drink. I'm right just answer. still amazed right now. I still, I can't get over that. Nice. Yeah. No, uh, it doesn't have anything to do with that painting. I'm still, I can't believe that. I fucking cannot believe that. I can't believe it. I don't know what to say. Detective Cheese is on the case. When you got Detective Cheese on the case, I mean, you know. A tiny kiosk in the heart of Calavera Hills. It's small, almost invisible, but hides one of the most crucial things in this shithole. Knowledge. Huh? Alright, take me out of here, bucko. Oh, I could go to Claville PD if I want. Yeah, might as well Phyllis go check it out. Are nowhere to be seen. Praise the great wild ones. We can go well, look at the, uh, at the crest omen. or whatever. I don't know. Maybe finally the pincushions have started to do something with themselves. And maybe it's not a coincidence, since we've just found a dead body, Marty. Yeah. What can I say? The night's starting to get off, huh? Just like the good old days. Well, let's just hope there won't be any more surprises tonight. You don't believe that, do you, boss? Mm. It's 
not there. Oh, shit. Hey, guys. Welcome in. How's everyone doing today? Y'all having a good one? Did you have a good stream? Was it fun? Did you enjoy yourself? Hey, thank you for the double raid, Cortillion Tay. I hope you had a good time playing Among Us. Hi, everybody. Wild. Hey, what's up? What's popping, everybody? We're Detective Cheese today. Welcome. I'm on cloud nine, actually, right now. I just, uh, guessed something fucking insane. There's a... Uh, uh, an insane puzzle that I just got. Don't know how I got that. Hey, Mom. It, honestly, incredible. Hey, thank today. you, Nunner, for the angry. gifted sub to Cortilli. Here's to you, buddy. I see the New Year's madness has started. Everyone busy? As normal, boys. The city's gone crazy, and we already have our first dead body. They found a girl in Flowerville. It's a nasty case. I what probably you know should have called the, Sonny, that in, you know? You know I, can't I should have you. called that in. Oh, I forgot on, to Mark. call the police. I only have 120 days left. I forgot to we call the police! These are my last beautiful days. On my feathers, Sonny. Stop I hope that, that doesn't fuck it's me over. So not your style. Ah, uh, he's been like this all day. Shut up, Marty. Hey, thanks, guys. Come on, Mon. All right. So we no, just I found a much. dead body. The girl I just found, found a dead house. body in this game that I we're playing. I you the address. I have and a I, hunch you already know. I didn't... I didn't call the police. You can go back and do it from the phone at the play. Okay, all right. I'm gonna go back and call the police then. Woo! Why do you think that? Never mind. Anyway, she was naked, but there wasn't any sign of a struggle. There was a message written on the wall and on her back, too. That's all? That's all. Thanks, Mon. You're not gonna ask what the message was? Uh, oh yeah, w what was it? You already know, don't you? God, <laughs> I'm an open book to you, Mon. One I've read too many times. I gotta go, I gotta go back to the scene of the crime to call the police because there's a, oh, the, uh, warning, there's a, gonna be a dead lady here. Never mind, I can't go back. I am unable to go back. I cannot go back. I, I've, I didn't call the police. Ah, fuck me. Well, that's unfortunate. Uh, hey, thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Thanks for popping in. I was gonna show you guys the dead body. I was gonna go back to the scene of the crime, show you guys the dead body and everything. It was gonna be really cool, but unfortunately, that's not the case. So instead, I'll just put on my detective cheese voice. And I'm on the case. All right, let's ask some questions. What do you know, Monica? I see the boss is ready to explode today. What did you expect? The madness kicked in and he's gotta be at the PD. Deputy Malloy's blind drunk. Uh, what's the name of the old man's wife again? Uh, poor lady. Marsha. Mm, poor lady. She was waiting here for a while too, hoping it'll only take a few minutes. But as soon as they saw the state Malloy was in, she got into a taxi and went home. So that's why the old hound's so angry. Please, boys, don't make him more so, all right? Unfortunately, I can't promise that, doll. As usual. Look what we found, Mon. Does this mean anything to you? It's beautiful. Embossed, gilded. These are rare. But I've never seen anything like this one before. Where's it from? I'm Where afraid from? that's a secret. At least for now. It's you from the dead body. You evidence from a crime scene, I hope. Oh, what are you thinking? On my feathers. You're gonna be in trouble, boys. Only if we don't wrap it up, Mon. Listen, Mon, uh, that girl they found in Flowerville. You've seen her, right? Yes, Go enjoy we were first your breakfast, on the scene. Belly. Boys, Have you a know good I one. should report you immediately, don't you? We know, Mon. We're only asking for a little more but time. But you won't. We're hot on the trail. Because if you know that we're damn anything, good at our you, jobs, uh, Monica. Please tell us. Are you crazy? Hey, keep it down. Blood boils right behind us. Please, Mon. It's a matter of life and death. God damn. Okay, but only because I can see how much it means to you. 
Thanks, doll. We'll be forever grateful. What do you know about Filmar? Good old Filmar hasn't been sniffing around here recently. Yeah, he was here a week and a half ago. He used the archives and took out some public records. That's all? That's all. Oh, and uh, he asked me out for a coffee. I hope you said no. Why are you so interested, Marty? No, I'm not. I just... just... I told him no. Just like I told you no on all 25 occasions. <sighs> Don't you Glad have a wife, that. Marty? Marty, it's a little fucked up. It's a little bit honest, fucked up, buddy. I'm worried about you boys. You haven't gotten mixed up in some shady affair, have you? We have. Sorry, Mon. No, I could never lie to you. Well, then I strongly advise you to get yourself out of it because I'm not in the mood for your funeral, all right? Furry gods, don't be so extreme, Mon. It's just some routine sniffing around on New Year's Eve. You don't do routine, boys. When you're sniffing around, fire and chaos follow. Hey, you're not Meredith H. Marble, the author of the Chicken Police books, by any chance? That would have been a great blurb. I'm not joking, boys. Okay, Mon. We'll be careful. I hope so. Thanks, Monica. Officer Barkman, one of Bloodboil's little protégés. He looks a little stupid. Officer Bar. I am Bloodboil. Shouting in three, two, one, and action. Thank you, Jabel. Mark, thank you for the 100 what bits. The Appreciate hell that. Do you think you're doing? We're just patrolling, sir. At the station? No, we're here for something else, sir. <sighs> you missed me, huh? No, sir. I mean, yes, sir. I, I mean... Why are you grinning, Santino? I can't grin, sir. I have a beak. Don't be cute. Mm. I can see it in your eyes. Should I close them, sir? Don't you peck at me, chicken, you hear? We're not even here anymore, Chief. We just quickly stopped by for something. Get out of my sight. Yes, sir. You're on duty. Am I right, Martin? Yes, sir. And why the hell are you standing here? Don't you have something to do? I do, sir. Then fuck off. <laughs> and you, Sonny, don't even think about saying anything. I can already see you're dying to say something funny. I wouldn't think about it, sir. All right, I'm getting out of here. We have no business. Anything over here in the shooting range? Shouldn't you be somewhere else, Marty? I mean, anywhere else. You know, I spend every New Year's Eve in here, Sonny. Ever since that New Year's Eve. It's better if I try to distract my thoughts, and work's the best way to do it. You mean fire rounds all night long? You drink, I just, fire. Just no fire offense. a gun until you no feel better, taken. I guess. And you, boss? Do you still think about the bloody New Year's? Almost every day, Marty. Almost every goddamn rust-eaten day. You know, pal, you're damn lucky with Laura. A woman like her. With a feathery loser like me? I didn't mean it that way. You're right, though. And don't believe for a second that I'm ungrateful. I give praise every day that I have her. Why well, are you trying to ask out other women on breakfast. dates then, Marty? Yeah, that too. It's a little bit fucked up. You have a wife, you know. Not that I want to dig around in your private life, but weren't you ever afraid of her? Of Laura? Why, because she's a predator? Yes, and because you're a chicken. And because you work for the predatory division. No, boss, never. Not for a second. There isn't a woman in the world more gentle than her. I believe you, pal. Good for you. Yeah, it is. Well, who's gonna be the first one to get emotional? Come on, give me a hug. Ah, oh, shut up, Marty. See you, Marty. I'm out of here, man. Looks like we have some new information, though. Something new in the Codex. The Bloody New Year's. That night that changed Sonny and Marty's lives forever. 
It started with a strange call, an unexpected visit from a tigress, and had it and ended in a hatching house where the duo had to witness an unprecedented massacre. Sonny became personally involved in the case when a strange figure in a top hat targeted his family, but escaped before he, had be, he could have been apprehended. In truth, the case was never officially closed, but under the pressure of the Attorney General, the papers had reported as, as the glorious triumph on the chicken police. This is where the legend originates from, started by an unfortunate lie. Never actually got solved. Good to know. What's up with Mullen's news? Should we say hi to the old beaver? Sure. Mullen is an old, old friend, so he certainly deserves a hello. And we do need information. Few people know as much about Clawville as the old woodchomper. An encyclopedia in the flesh. Yeah, he always has something. What's up, Mullen? We're getting older and older. And Mullen's not changing a bit. Where's Some the people just have it so lucky. He's just Masahiro eternal. Sakurai is like one of them. an ancient god or something. A guy looks or the younger as he ages. Of the city. What a lovely thought. But if the city took shape, it would most likely be some kind of vermin. Yeah, true. But that wasn't uh, very uh, politically correct coming from you, pal. Hey, you know I didn't mean it like that. Yeah, a little I know, bit Marty. fucked up, Marty. You're too good for this world. Ah, oh, thanks, boss. It wasn't a compliment, Marty. No, you're stupid, Marty. Hey, Hercule. What's up, old friend? Hello, me lads. It's good to see you. What are you doing around here where you never see a cat, go boy? <laughs> we're working, Uncle Mullen, just like you. But I'm afraid we're also walking a little bit outside the law. But it's New Year's Eve. Couldn't it wait a bit? Whatever the case is, it can't be that serious. I'm afraid it is. Maybe you can help us with a few things. After all, you know everyone in the city. <laughs> what a compliment. But of course I'll help if I can. I know you ever since you appeared in the city. Young, fresh, full of ambition. And little Marty had been just a chick when he was already coming here every day with his daddy, eh? <laughs> You're like me sons, so you are. Oh, thanks, Uncle Mullen. Oh, thanks, Mullen. What's up, old man? Is everything all right? Uh, me bones are creaking. Me eyesight's getting more and more blurry. And sometimes I hear sounds that aren't even there. I think I'm getting old. Or maybe I've gone crazy already, but the old ticker's still ticking. So, here I am. Ah, it's good to still have an old familiar spot in the city. Ah, nothing lasts forever, boys. So, what is this dirt you've ended up in again, eh? Ah, uh, just a simple case, strumming personal strings. That's why I couldn't refuse it. You know the tune. Well, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Same old song, eh? Yeah, it's a classic. So, what is it you want to know? I match your service, me lads. Thanks, old pal. Let's see. Mullen never closes his kiosk. Anyway. What do you know about Eben? Eben's a ruthless gangster, that's for sure. But he's not bloodthirsty or stupid. You're not in danger until you're in his way. And that's not so easy to manage as the whole city's in his hands. How come they never tried to approach you, Uncle? What? <laughs> of course they tried. They wanted to buy the whole area and build some huge parking garage on it. Mongrel Mick, Eben's number one pug, came here and threatened me more than once. If I hadn't dug me heels in, the others would have sold up. The lawyers behind me, even Biff, the owner of Chandler's. But I told them, over my call, dead Trying to uh, gentrify your old stand, then. Hmm. <laughs> I'm too much for them, lads. Or I'm just too famous around here to get rid of. We could say Ibn's almost almighty, but he avoids scandal like rats avoid fire. <laughs> That's a good one. 
Oh, I'm a poor nobody, my lads, but my name still carries meaning. This place has always belonged to my family. If my dead body had been found here or in the times, it would have caused a scandal, even without any evidence. So, he usually listens to reason. Uh, when I talked to him tonight, he seemed confused, dissolute, and impetuous to me. That's uncharacteristic. Are you sure it was him? Are you joking? Ibn Wessler's not usually confused with anyone else. Of course I'm joking. Beaver humor, you know? <laughs> Nobody gets it. Not even the beavers. <laughs> Good one again. Beaver humor, huh? Hey, Martin, my lad, what's up? How's that beautiful wife of yours? Laura's perfectly fine, thank you. It's crazy you could grab an amazing woman like her, son. Are you blackmailing her with something? Ah, I missed your famous beaver humor. I'm just messing with you, son. Anyway, you look good. You're in good shape. You look more like a turkey than a rooster, if you ask me. Um, thanks. This Fucking is priceless. Beaver humor. Thanks, Hercule. We'll be back again soon. Yeah, sure will. Feel like a turkey. Nice girl. Monica Rosen. She used to come here for a while, but I, I think she moved downtown. Yeah, she's the poster girl for workaholism. She lives in an apartment across from the PD, but sleeps at the station, if she sleeps at all. Some animals just race and race through the years of their life until someone stops them and makes them wind down. Is there someone like that waiting for everyone? Indeed there is, somewhere. <laughs> Usually not where we're looking for them. Yeah, right. Yeah, god damn it, I'm a workaholic myself, I get it. Uh Hercules Bullen. I like Monica. What about her? She's still beautiful and she's still Monica's my wife. fucking badass. And I still don't get why she hasn't left me already. <laughs> because she's too much like you, you stubborn old damn builder. You see, you're right about that, sonny boy. And uh the cubs? Cubs? <laughs> More like jumbo cubs. John sees a hotshot lawyer in Galadia, and Timmy also left Clawville to try his luck in Grassmore. But who could blame them? Good move. Ah, yeah, but they visit me often, though. They're good kids. I know, pal. They're from a good litter. <laughs> if you say so, Sonny. Yeah, like this guy. He's cool. Mullins. You know anything cool about dude. a woman named Natasha Katsenko? Sonny boy, what have you gotten yourself into again? That lass is Ibn Wessler's protege, to put it politely. She's the crown jewel of the city. A shining new star. If you dare talk to a gal such as her, you can expect some serious lead poisoning, me boy. Well, I suppose I should have come to you first for advice. Doesn't matter now. We're in it, Uncle. Up to our combs. If you'll accept the advice of an old shaggy beaver, get to the end of it as quickly as you can, and try to make it out with all your feathers. Yeah, that's the plan. But do you know anything about her? Anything, uh, interesting? As I've heard, Natasha is quite a mysterious lass. She came from the Stavonian Sardom and fled to Clawville. But from what? No one knows. Some years of her life are shrouded in mystery, and that really means good. You're right about that. So, uh, that's your advice? Be careful? At least, sorry boy. And one more thing. What's that? Never fall in love with a woman like her. Mm. Thanks, Hercule. I wasn't planning to. Nobody plans to, Sonny. Just take care of each other, okay? And always carry a good gun in your pocket. Oh, I always have one in every pocket, old-timer. I know, Martin. I know. It's kind of a problem, honestly, Marty. I don't know what to say. It's a little so, fucked. what is it you want to know? I'm at your service, me lads. Thanks, old pal. Let's see. Well, we pretty much learned everything that we could learn from you, but we learned a lot about a lot of people. So what do we got? We know that Natasha came to Clawville from... Oh, we know where Na Natasha came to Clawville from, but there are several years in her life that are completely dark to us. Not even all the all-knowing Mullen can tell us more about her. Yeah, she's mysterious for sure. I feel like she may have been an important person in Stavonia. 
Monica's such a workaholic that she moved to the block opposite the PD. But despite the move, she sleeps at the station very often. Yikes. Ibn's dirty little paws reach every dark corner in the city. Even good old Mullen was approached by his men several times. Even Mullen. What's up with this guy? Timothy Saltwater. Special feature. Loud, annoying, and overly enthusiastic. And unfortunately, he is the number one fan of the chicken police. See the guy who wrote the, uh, the article on us, the very first one? Uh, probably made a lot of money off of us. Hercules Mullen. Old and full of secrets like the city itself. Mullen is an old comrade from the bef from before the times of the chicken police. So from terribly long ago. I used to call him Uncle Mullen even when I was just a fresh patrolman. Even though he's only a couple of years older than me. He represents many things I wanted to become. Honest, wise, and always cheerful. But now I'm an alcoholic. Mullen knows almost everything about everyone worth knowing. We should use this to our advantage. Old Mullen's kids flew out the nest a long time ago, but he's eternal and unstoppable, like some kind of ancient rock this city is built upon. Thanks, Mullen. Chandler's used to be quite a prestigious cafe. Magnificent animals had breakfast here, and in the evenings, philosophers and writers would get drunk together and argue. The place is now just a second-hand bookshop, just a shadow of its former self. Like so many things in this city. Like me. I'm all washed up. Well, we could go back to uh, the SAR Club. So what are we See doing here again, there. Sonny? I don't know. Maybe we could question Natasha. Do you think she's here? Who knows, Marty? We'll see. There's Philmar. Maybe he knows something. Yeah, maybe he's not drunk as a skunk. Stop projecting onto others, old chicken. Ah, shut the clock up, Marty. No, oh, I'm sorry I hurt your precious feelings, boss bird. Hey, Philmar. Philmar looks a bit soaked, doesn't he? Well, it is raining. I didn't mean the rain, Marty. Yeah, I know. Oh, he's swaying a little bit. Hey, old bird. What are you waiting for out here in the rain? Is that you, boys? I'm a little uh, tired. I can see that, pal. Oh, it's all right. I just can't find my car. I don't see very well in the rain. It's my eyesight's pretty bad. I should wear glasses. <laughs> Imagine that. A hawk wearing glasses. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. There ain't nothing <laughs> funny about it, Snowflake. Oh, all right. Sorry. Have you seen uh, Natasha or Ibn since It's a we little left? ironic. Ibn? Gotta be honest, uh, Philmar. I got put off a long time ago. Natasha, I haven't seen her. Thanks anyway, pal. Uh, good luck with finding your car. You uh, want some help? Could it be that I didn't come here by car? What do you think, Sonny? Your old friend? Well, I wouldn't know that, Phil, but, uh, you take care, all right? Ah, uh, you're telling me? <laughs> oh, that's funny. Sonny, pal, listen. Tell me, Phil. I like you. Really, I do. So listen here. Whatever happens, yeah? Whatever happens, never fall in love with that woman. You mean Natasha? Who else would I mean, bird brain? Okay, okay, Phil. I promise. <sighs> like hell. Goddamn, Phil. I don't even know what to say. Hey, boys, tell me, is Natasha still inside? I can't give you any information about that, gentlemen. I'm sorry. Ah, oh, the regulations. I know. We've gotten used to it. I am glad to hear that. And your boss, Wessler? Can we find him in the VIP lounge? I'm afraid I can't tell you that either. But we can take a look for ourselves, right? 
No problem, gentlemen. Thanks, Wooly. Your friend's not the talkative type, is he? He understands what we're saying, right? Don't anger me, chicken, or I'll tear out your throat before you could say hemp seed. Ha! Huh. Just try, Fleabag. Hey, folks, relax. The night's still young. We'll have plenty of time to tear each other's throats out, but right now we're busy. Ha! Huh. You're right. Bye, guys. Goodbye, gentlemen. See you later. And let's go inside. See if we can't this find it. This guy was here before, right? He's handling it pretty well. And there are even more pretty dames all over him. You think they dig his antlers that much? I dig his, like his antlers. his wallet, Marty. And his wallet. I, I, I dig both. Nice. What's up, bartender? I can't stand that guy. Why doesn't he have his mane cut? Stop being so old, old man. It's a different world now. That's a kind of fashion, you know. Yeah, fashion. Hello again, Bojack. Please don't call me that, sir. You're right. I'm sorry. Uh, what's your name again? Well, if you really must know, I'm Lance, sir. Okay, Lance. Listen, it's very important. Oh, please, sir. Don't get me involved in anything. I just want to get my shift over with and go home to sleep. Relax. There won't be a problem. Just answer the questions honestly. Oh, if I must, let's give it a try. Right, kid. Lance. Eh, Lance. Yeah. So, have you seen Natasha since her performance? No, no, don't ask me anything about Miss Kitsenko and Mr. Westler. It could cost me my job, or even more. Hey, it's a matter of national security. It could be. Yeah, see, it could be. So, if you help, you won't only be helping us, but the Crown and the whole city of Clawville. Oh, okay, all right, just stop that chicken shit, will ya? <laughs> I saw Natasha, yeah. She came down, spoke with someone, then stormed out the front door. And then what happened? She came right back in, two or three minutes later, soaked to the bone. She was in a hurry. She went up to her suite, then came back down and left. And you haven't seen her since? I genuinely haven't seen her ever since, sir. Thanks, Lance. You've been a great help. <laughs> I'm happy to hear that. So Natasha had Appreciate left. Appreciate you, Lance. Seems so. I like Lance. But she never arrived at the weekend house. Then? Then we'll stay with the original plan. We'll gather our thoughts at the office and go over everything we know. Okay, boss bird. Lead the way. Sounds good. Sure we shouldn't, like, go up to her room or whatever? What did we learn about people? Filmler is soaked to the bones. Hey, old buddy. It's so cliche. Is that really all we had to learn here? Seems like this was kind of a useless uh, trip. Alrighty then. Let's go ahead and head back to the office. We had no choice but to continue the investigation where it started. In that shady little apartment I called home. The only lead was the list Filmar gave us, with all those imposing names on it. But what could it mean? And why did Natasha keep it secret from us? But most importantly, what did all this have to do with Deborah's death? The trail started to get cold, and so did the air outside. There was something unsettling in the black clouds, hiding all the stars. I prayed that they didn't bring an early snowfall. The night was already painful enough. Mm. So, what are we doing here? Trying to calm down. I'll have a shot. Sure you will. And we're trying to put the pieces together, of course. Figure out what's next. And what is next, Boss Bird? Let's take a look at what we've learned so far. So, how did this whole case start? It's time to investigate possible suspects. A 
gangster lover, strange threats, Deborah's dead, a frightened cat, Natasha and Molly. The whole case started with a frightened cat. No, strange threats. Strange threats that started all of this. Possible suspects. Started with Natasha. And, uh... Something to do with this list? Natasha and the threats. But what's the connection? Well, they were clearly addressed to her. Yeah, the threats are meant for Natasha, no doubt about that. That led to Natasha being afraid? Or some kind of item? And so Natasha sent me... The letter? But not now. It's something to do with this strange list. Oh, something to do with the threats had something to do with the list, right? But there was something Natasha didn't speak about. She kept it secret. She lied about it. Well, she kept it Natasha secret. Natasha is terrified. And she's in real danger. But she kept this list hidden from us. It seems too important to keep it a secret. Well, yeah. So why did she do that? I mean... Does something to do with IBN? Olivia? No, not Olivia. Deborah. No? Lewis. Why is that have something to do with Lewis? Is Lewis on the list? But what can we do with this list? He may know something about it. It makes him suspicious. Use it as a diversion. He may know something I about it, I think. I only one person who moves in circles high enough to know where it's from. Lewis. We must ask him if we want to get out of this dead end. Yeah, yeah. So the card is uh, uh, maybe a dead end. The piece of painting too. But the list Philmar gave us. Exactly, full of those imposing names. And I only know one person who moves in similar circles. Lamar. Yes, Marty, it's Lewis, exactly. Of course, it's Lewis. But where do we find the bunny man? Well, since he owns this building, I'm hoping he's here. It's worth a call. You know his number? By heart. 555-932. I wrote it down in my notebook as well. Oh, you are a professional, Boss Bird. I wrote it down in my notebook as well. 555932. Hey, Lewis, uh, sorry to disturb you. Again, uh, could you come over to my place? I uh, have a question for you. It's very important. It's about a case. A real case? With the chicken police? Of course, Sonny. I'll be over in a few minutes. Thanks, pal. I owe you one. One? <laughs> Just a little second. Hey, Lewis. Good old rabbit. I can always rely on him. He is a good old rabbit. 
Thanks, Lewis. Again. Oh, don't m m mention it. Besides, it was my big dream, dream, dream to help you with a serious case. Well, let's hope you can help. What can you tell me about this list, old pal? Hmm. Well? Well, these names. I know ha half of them personally. Maybe even more. I knew it. But, but I have no idea what kind of list this is. Here we go. But these are all members of the upper c c class. Politicians, business people, oh my. <clears throat> Even the commander of the r r Royal Guard. Damn. But I really don't know what it m means. So, is it a dead end? I'm a b afraid so. I could ask him about it. Deborah, the girl who came to me tonight. Yes, she's a very lovely young Was lady. A very Where did you take her after you two young left? Lady. Where she asked me to, to Flowerville. Flowerville, Rochester Street, thirty-seven. Y yes, exactly. Why? Luck. <gasps> did something happen? Nothing good, Lewis. Nothing good. This? This? You know anything about oh, the strange my card? Goodness. I think we have a bingo, gentlemen. Hmm? You s s see, I also have one of these. A card? Like this? Really? Y yes. It's a membership card to a very exclusive club. How exclusive? Very. That's what I'm talking about. What does SN mean, Lewis? It's the s s sweltering Nile. But that's a... Well, yes, it's a brothel. But it's not, not like that. It's s s something completely different. Calm down, Lewis. We're not going to tell anybody. Thank you s s so much. <laughs> it is rather embarrassing. <clears throat> Listen, Lewis. How do we get in? You want to get in? Well, if you could sh sh show them this card, they'll... Sh sh surely let you in, but it will be obvious you're not regulars there. We're used to that. So, are we going to a luxury brothel? Correct, Marty. Thanks for the help, Lewis. I owe you one. For the third time today, I think. Luxury brothel? I don't know what you s s s said to him, but after you finished, he almost immediately van, van disappeared. Really? That's suspicious. Or he had business elsewhere. It's New Year's Eve. Everybody's going somewhere. What about I Natasha? See, I didn't see her after the sh show. If I'm not mistaken, she usually leaves when everyone else has already left. What else do you know about her, Lewis? Oh, not much. What everybody knows, she was a dancer, then a backing singer, then st star, and then club owner. We found out as much already. Do you think she'd fled the Stavonian massacre? That's why the secrecy. Do you mean the massacre of the royal f family? I'd say her accent is a dead g g giveaway, and her name too, though it's undoubtedly an alias. So it's possible that she is a part of the royal family? I d d don't think so. Nobody could have survived that hor hor awful night. Mm, you're probably right. She escaped a massacre in Stavonia. What should we know about the place, Lewis? Besides what they're uh, dealing in there? No, oh, it's an elegant and Deborah's exclusive dead. place. Not everybody visits Call her them for, for that, you know. Some dead animals bruh. just go for company. <clears throat> I see. I guess it's mostly visited by the upper class. M mostly, y yes. The wealthy who have a taste. Yes, of course. Is it true what they say, that it's some kind of hidden stronghold of the royalists? The Nile is a proud herald of the coexistence of all the sp species, yes. But stronghold? I don't think so. But the place must be an eyesore for the separatists, right? 
Oh, don't, 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 don't worry for the girls, Sonny. They can defend themselves quite well. The s s separatists wouldn't dare to go near the place. Well, we'll see what they have to say about these two old cocks. Uh, that was a little bit, um, <clears throat> equivocal. Interesting. May I ask what you have gotten yourself into? This looks s s s serious. It's complicated, Lewis. But nothing good, I can tell you that much. Ah, is there a a a anything else that I can help you with? Maybe there's something. You pay my rent for uh, for another Maybe month. Maybe I should ask something specific from him. Oh. Interesting. All right. Look, uh, I'm sorry I dragged you into this, Marty. Ah, don't be. I would have been bored to death. Still be on that shooting range. And Laura, what about her? She's used to it. Every New Year's the same. You know, since that special one. Don't say it. A bloody New Year's. Yeah. So Laura's probably at home, waiting for me on the couch, staring into a candle and killing a bottle of wine. Or two. You can get out of this any time. You know that, don't you? If you start something, finish it, right? Let's just make it through alive, okay? Or Laura will bite off my head. Literally. I'm on it, partner. That's what I was saying, Clover. I mean, we could we'd add, definitely specifically ask him to pay our rent for the, like, the next few months and everything. Like, you know, he's like the landlord for the whole place and all that. So, like, I just kind of figured that maybe, you know, it'd, it'd be easiest for both of us if... Anyway, uh, clues. What do we have for clues? The, clar the card we found on Deborah is a membership card of a luxury brothel, the Sweltering Nile. Luxury brothel. Hey, Lewis. Well, well, it seems old Thumper likes to kill time in a very luxurious way. Titties. An almost legendary luxury, br luxury brothel that is visited mainly by members of the upper crust. And by Lewis, as it turned out recently. All right. Let's head to the sweltering Nile. It's the next, next place to be. Chapter 2. To Marty's delight, we were heading toward the most exclusive brothel in Clawville. The Separatists and those opposing the monarchy hated the place, just like they hated everything that supported interracial relations and peaceful coexistence of all species. So the place wasn't just a brothel, it was a symbol. But just like a brothel is not a worthy symbol, Clawville failed to turn out the way it was intended. 